Today is Thursday, October 3rd, 2024, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian Podcast. I'm your host, Nate. <laughs> oh, we've got a fun one for you today. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right. Uh, someone asked the question, um, what happens when Christians behave badly? <laughs> well, it's Thursday. <laughs> um, constantly. So we talk about that. What do we do, right? It's not like an actual church structure where there's elders and pastors to take them before and things like that. Um, it's basically a social audio app, right? And people forming factions and, and attacking each other, calling every other person a heretic, not Christian, while displaying, displaying awful Christian behavior. What do we do about that? Um, well, we have real-life examples of us trying. Uh, listen to the end. <laughs> So uh, we get into a little bit of that. Christians behave badly, and then you get to see a bunch of Christians behave badly. Uh, but we talk about kid drama, right? How do how do you teach ki- uh, kids to get along um, with other kids who don't really want to get along with them? So we, we talk about that a little bit. Uh, then we talk to, man, this atheist guy, He's he's been around. He used to be a pretty calm, chill guy. He's, he's got a lot testier lately. But we talk to him, try to walk on eggshells to not send him into a, a fit of rage. Um, I think we do all right. Um, anyway, then we get into lady pastors and deaconesses, because why not? Um, so someone asked the questions. Th- this topic is a curse. Uh, the Bible says what it says, man. I mean, the Bible says what it says. <laughs> There's really no wiggle room, unless you need to like twist it into wiggle room. It's like, no, no, I see what the Bible says. <laughs> That's not what, really what it says. <laughs> That's not really what it means. I'll tell you what it means. Oh, yeah? You're going to tell us what the Bible means? The Bible's very clear in multiple places. So it's it's really not about interpretations or sexism or um, um, like problems with like people hate women or something like that or being misogynist. It's just this is what the Bible says, man. Do it or don't. No sweat off my back. Um, okay, and then we talk about democracy, quotes, democracy in the uh, political debate a little bit. We just touch on it for like five minutes. It's not too big. Then we get into 2 Corinthians 10, 5 and 6. What does this verse really mean? It's talking about casting down or taking captive imaginations and uh, controlling these thoughts and, uh, you know, talking about perfecting obedience or completing your obedience and being quick to discipline these and correct these actions and things like that. So we talk about that a little bit. And then uh, some, you know, dude who I I think is an atheist, last I checked, uh, probably didn't espouse to be a good moral one without the belief in a God or God's, tries to dredge up uh, one of the Christians who joined us who admitted recently they had a, a past with, like, alcohol um, and a problem with it in, in the distant past, they say. So it's like, I mean, dude, it's like, do you know Christianity 101? This is like the devil. You're, like, channeling your inner Satan right now. It's like the accuser of the brethren. Like, do you, do you, is that the team you want to be on? So basically this dude, like, tries to bring up alcoholism. This guy's trying to give a Bible a Bible point about the Second Corinthians thing. He's like, why would anyone want to listen to you? You're an alcoholic. You're drinking. Oh, you're got a bad liver. You're drinking. You're an alcoholic. Ah. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, like you want to drink some baby's blood while you're at it? Like, goodness. Like, can you not see how even if you don't believe Christianity, you are filling the role of the actual Satan right now? Um, Not saying you are the actual Satan, but the very things the Bible says he does, like condemning, hurling accusations, like the accuser of the brethren, all these things. Congratulations. You're the devil right now. Um, Why would you do that? So don't, like, act like you're a good moral atheist. You're so far evolved above God and Christians and our silly beliefs. Like, you're straight to the... Anyways, you're going to hear this. The point is, if you if you don't want to be a Christian, you should repent and believe the gospel, get eternal life. But if you don't want to, at least don't go to the complete cesspool of trying to dredge up something from someone's past and throw that in their face and use them against them when use it against them when they're trying to like be helpful to someone else who's looking for help. What a trash mindset. Not the person, but definitely the mindset. So hopefully, um, the person will think about what they've said and do better. When you know better, do better. Anyway, um, I've got my hands full. <laughs> I mean, I'm not perfect either, but good Lord, can we have a day off? Um, okay, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And um, I think that's it, man. I, I'm going to go to the beach or something. I, I can't. It's been destroyed by a hurricane. <laughs> Maybe I'll go sit in my bathtub. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Thank you for calling Ask a Christian. How have Christians disappointed you today? Oh, in a myriad of ways. I can't even count, my friend. <clears throat> did uh, did your goldfish die and you blame God? Or did a Christian say, hey, brother, 
stop having sex with all those prostitutes. And you said, don't judge me, and left the church and left God because of it. Anything like that going on? You know, it was actually my goldfish was the prostitute. <laughs> so, I don't know. Leviticus says, if I mean, assuming that's even possible, um, you know. I don't know. I haven't had coffee yet, man. You're asking <laughs> me to be creative and funny. No, that did it. The, the goldfish thing, yeah. The goldfish is your, wait, girlfriend that also died? Or was it a male goldfish? Wow, that, that's like a trifecta of, like, nasty. I don't know, man. Would you rather have a goldfish or a gold digger? <laughs> Can a, hmm. Yeah. Huh? Eh? I guess I mean I guess I guess a gold fish could be a gold digger. I mean it could just like you know soil all the all the cheap uh, furnishings and like it, it could mess up the the little undersea castle you have and force you to buy the more expensive upgraded ones. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah, that's like a quad quadruple whammy. What's up, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Why are you quoting Kanye West? That was Chris. Was that Kanye or was it? Uh, or was it? Uh, I think that was Jamie Fox, right? No, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of hip hop songs about gold diggers. Let's face it. Well, wait. Yeah, it was the, that one it, 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 is named it, Gold Digger. Yeah. It, well, it was the, it was the one with three of them, right? It was like Kanye West, Jamie Fox, and someone else did that song, right? I, I thought it was Jamie Jamie Fox that did the gold digger part. Yeah, that was that was Jamie Fox and Kanye West. There was no third person with that. Yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, yeah, I thought it was Jamie Foxx that, that said, had the gold digger line. But regardless, um, <laughs> how have Christians disappointed you today, Sean? Talking about everything but the Lord. Well, the day is young, so plenty of time to add to it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what happened yesterday. There was like, uh, I guess the cross mob did a room with Rick Reel's name in it. Because like Quentin was all sore. I don't know. Got, got got crazy yesterday. Oh, you mean two days ago when all the fallout happened in here. And, and, and they're, they're like, they're like, you Christians are not out I'm like, dude, the, none of the people you're talking about are like ever in here. Like, like I, I can't help you. And then it's like someone else leaves. And it's like, tag team, I'm in. It's like, ask a Christians. Da, 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 da. It's like, wait, I have nothing to do with this. Like, just let me talk about God. That's all I want to do. Like, I don't want to talk about people. Okay, we won't talk about people. Hey, let's talk about people. You said we're going to talk about people. Okay. What's up, V? Save us from ourselves. Hey. Not um, the Jesus way, just in like the normal person way. <laughs> you got something about to say, say about gold diggers? <laughs> Give us a good line about gold diggers. Or goldfish. I don't have a good line about gold diggers, y'all. Sorry. It's <laughs> definitely too early for me, too. Um, so yesterday, the conversation about bad behavior amongst Christians came up. And we were just kind of hashing that out a little bit. And I guess in the midst of that, that kind of rolled into all other rooms with people's names and the titles. So there's yeah. that. Oh. As someone who frequently has their name and titles. And behaves badly. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Okay, but sincerely speaking, we know that yes. there are tons of verses about bad behavior, right? And how we are meant to correct it. And it's been something I have been thinking about a lot. Um, especially because on this app, I think we get a pretty interesting view of the the body of Christ, all right? And I know a lot of people will argue about, well, who's the body? Because that was literally a question a couple of days ago that was like, what? <laughs> anyway, um, at what point do we behave like Christians? Do we put it on and take it off? Or are we supposed to behave like it all the time, all right? And what's that supposed to look like? Also, if that is the case, um, yeah, let's just start there. Do we just, I don't know, on Clubhouse, are we not supposed to be behaving like the Bible expects us to? I honestly We're supposed have... to be dressed up on the outside and rotten on the inside. I think you talked about that. I think that. that's Halloween. Dang it. I think, I mean, for, for a real answer, like, I, I guess I don't have one. I mean, it's it's so hard. Like, I, I've been doing this thing for, gosh, I keep saying 13 years. It's probably like 14 years now. But I've been doing this forever. And it's the same thing, right? So, so you know, I'm like almost probably 14 years in, still don't have a better answer, right? Because, you know, we, we've had come to Jesus meetings with all the, all the like, you know, people around from the Google days, from, 
not so much clubhouse because I just kind of gave up. I'm like, look, guys, everyone knows the right answer. Here it is. Um, but, you know, as far as like come to Jesus meetings, heart to heart, small group uh, conversations, trying to get everyone on the same page. It's like everyone knows it. Like you show them in the Bible. They're like, well, Bible says it. Yep, it's true. And then uh, they're like, I'm going to do better. And like 30 minutes later, they're not doing better. But on the other hand, it's like, well, everyone's got their like pet project, right? Everyone's got their issues. So it's like, for, from my perspective, I'm like, okay, well, look, I, I, I mean, you know, not floating my boat too much, hopefully. But I mean, I, I seem to be able to converse and not completely freak out on people that much. I mean, I, I can get a little testy sometimes, but, you know, typically the, the, a lot of the drama, I, I somehow, I hope, knock on wood, ha, have avoided a lot of it. Um, but I've got issues that historically are way worse than just saying mean things. So it's like, well, I don't know, right? Because it's like, well, are are the people here who have like backbiting, like, you know, Christians behaving badly, um, you know, like with their speech, um, is that the worst of their issues? Because if so, well, yeah, it's still not good. It's still giving Christ a bad name, but it's not like murdering hobos on the side of the road. For, for the record, that was not also my issue either. But I mean, it, it's like, so how much can I really judge? And it's like, I, I mean, not judge, but, you know, judge rightly, right? Like point out the verses, point out all the stuff. And you're like, look, guys, you know better, so you should do better. But it, it's like to really like point that finger because uh, it's like, you know, the log in my own eye has historically been way worse than just saying bad stuff and acting like a bad Christian. So it's like, okay, well, if, if I've got way bigger issues than that, historically, like currently, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right um, for the most part, but historically, like way worse issues than that. Um, then how hard can I really be on people that just say mean things? Is that their biggest issue? Because if that's their biggest issue, um, that's not too much to work on. Uh, they just need to work on it. Um, however, if that's like one of their small issues and they're like also like way, way, way bad, like off of Clubhouse, well, then that's just extra bad. So, I mean, I guess that's a lot to say. I don't really have an answer and I don't know other than, you know, doing the same thing, expecting different results is the definition of insanity or at least it's Einstein's definition of insanity. So I, I don't know. Um, so that's why I, I kind of just like set up my own camp here. I'm like, look, guys, come in, da, da, da. And there's like one rule, and it's be civil. And, you know, that's the goal. Doesn't always happen, but I, I try. So however people behave on their outside, it's like, look, we've already told you. The Bible's already told you how you should behave. I, I guess God just has to be important enough to you to let certain offenses go. Oh, which brings up all, along your lines. I don't mean to ramble, except I am, so I guess I do. I'm sorry. But my kid um, in school was telling me about this issue she's currently having, and I was uh, flummoxed on how to give her good advice. So apparently there's this kid in her school, um, and, and it's a really small school. So apparently I'm told there's not a lot of options on where to go, like you know, like at lunchtime and recess and stuff like that. There's very limited options because the right answer is, look, just avoid them, ignore them, stay away from them. But I'm told that's like nearly impossible in, in these situations that she's in. So she's pretty much going to be like seated at the same table or area with this person. Well, apparently this person is like a, has a really nasty attitude and is always like, you know, just like, uh, well, kind of like a bad behaved Christian on Clubhouse, except they're not a Christian at all. And I guess in like elementary school, the topic of religion has came up a couple times and she has made it very clear. She has nothing, nothing to do with Christianity or God or anything like that. And, uh, her attitude reflects it. Uh, but the point is, okay, so <clears throat> she was telling me how this person, you know, starts like, she want, it's weird. It's like she wants to be her friend, and then the next minute she doesn't. There's like this group of like five girls, and it's all this back and forth. Like they, they basically are forced to kind of hang out together because I guess like the few other options are like way worse. It's like like boys that are like constantly getting in trouble and like like actually doing like physically bad things, like getting in fights and kicking. So it's like, this group of girls that don't wouldn't naturally be friends are kind of forced into this friendship group together because there's no other option. So anyways, that comes out from time to time. And this, this one girl um, I, that I'm told, I guess, is on the large side of things um, is also mean. And, you know, you've heard the saying, you can be skinny and mean or fat and nice, but you can't be fat and mean. Um, that's the saying. It's not my words. Don't say fat. That's bad. But um, so it's like she tries to be nice to her. I'm taking, you know, this is my daughter's word. So I'm sure the truth lies somewhere in the middle. But my daughter says, you know, her and this other girl who I guess is a Christian goes to church and whatever. Um, she says, uh, well, she just always tries to be nice. I'm like, well, what does this girl do when this this girl, like, I guess, decides that she they're not liking her as much as they should. 
So she starts like basically cussing them out. And you're like, you're being a B, you're being a B, F you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what grade is she in? My gosh. Um, anyway, so she's like, well, yeah, every time she calls me a B, I just say, you're fat and no one likes you. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, okay, well, okay, hang on. Let me think about this. Like, it took two days. And I no, still wait, have a she's great telling time. the truth, though. In that well, moment, well, well, and that's not <laughs> cruel. It's well, not cruel, on. it's the truth. Uh, okay, hold on. So I spent two days and still don't have really a better answer. But maybe you can help me with that in conjunction with Christians behaving badly. So we're almost done. I need to condense this, this stuff. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, well, that's not good, right? I mean, it may be true, but, but it's, not, it's not good. So I'm like, okay, what would Jesus do? I'm like, well, you know, Jesus would probably... I, I, Tell her that her daddy's the devil. What do you mean? <laughs> well, Jesus would probably, like, you know, leave them and shake the dust from his feet and all that. But I'm like, okay, well, the right answer would be just stay far away from them, ignore them, have nothing to do with them. But apparently that's not really a viable option because they're going to have to be in proximity together. So I'm like, okay, what's the second best option? And I'm like, okay, well, you know, calling someone fat and, like, you know, hurting their feelings, like, it's certainly not a good witness. Um so, I mean, you know, if you ever did get around, like, talking about Jesus and sharing the gospel, after you've called someone fat a thousand times, they're probably not going to hear too much you have to say. Um, so I'm like, okay, what else can we do? I'm like, well, y you need to find a way to convey to this person, like, you know, cursing people out is not a good way to make friends and da-da-da. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know a script to give you because I don't know your exact circumstance. And if you say it in a way, like being being mean is bad but being nice is the way to friendship or something like you're going to look weak and a weenie and you're going to deserve the ridicule you get so i'm like you have to find a way to like sound cool in conveying the message that that like in, in encourages her to modify her behavior like hey look are you trying to get bullied like do you want to get bullied is that what you're trying to do because this is the way to do it like stop it like i don't want to i don't want to bully you i don't want other people to bully you like like just stop it like be nice that's the answer um, so i'm like you got to figure out a way that's like I don't know, cool or hip to convey that message. Because if you do it wrong, you're going to get bullied for being a weenie and weird. Um, anyway, so I'm like, well, what does this other girl do? Like the church girl. She's like, she just ignores her. I'm like, okay. And what? She's like, she just takes it. So I'm like, every time she like curses her out, she just takes it. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. On one hand, I mean, you know, that that's probably like sort of a Christ-like answer. But on the other hand, like, man, I, I don't, like knowing knowing the right answer and then doing the right answer are two different things. They're like, what would someone do? It? What would you do if someone said it to you? I'm like, well, if I couldn't avoid them and someone just like curses me, I'm like, I like to think I would just ignore them and take it. But realistically, I don't think I could. Um, so I'm like, so the conclusion I currently came at, that I'm done. The best thing I currently have is look, man. Okay. You know, you believe in Jesus. You love God. You're going to go to heaven forever. You're going to spend eternity in heaven, right? If this person, it's probably a bad way to look at it. I'm like, if this person hates God, hates Jesus, doesn't care about religion, like hates, hates everything, is never going to like, you know, turn from their ways and follow Jesus, then they're going to end up in hell forever. I'm like, so if you look at it that way, um, it, it should make it a little easier for things to roll off your back. If she says mean things, it's like, look, man, if she doesn't get right and like follow God and follow Jesus and she spends eternity in hell, like you can probably let a couple mean comments roll off your back. And I'm like, by the way, don't tell her that. And she's like, oh, really? Why not? I'm like, oh, crap. She would have totally told her that. I'm like, look, man, don't tell her that. That will create a whole bunch of issues. I'm like, look, if religion ever comes up or something like that, yes, share the gospel. Like, be like, hey, yes, you need Jesus. But but don't be like, you're going to go to hell. Like, that's, that's the wrong way to go about it. Okay, anyways, that's the, currently the best thing I have is if, if she hates God, hates Jesus, is never going to repent, she's going to be in hell. Therefore, you can let some mean comments roll off your back. That, that's currently the best I have. All right, okay. someone save me. Me as a mom with a daughter, I tell her this. Sometimes the truth is going to sting, all right? So our job is to try to deliver it in a way where the person can actually hear the message. So something I would implement with your child, given the opportunity, would be, hey, so maybe when she's doing that, try not to react to what it is she's saying. But then maybe ask her like a sincere question, like, why do you do that, right? Like, do you know that none of us like that? <clears throat> and if you know that none of us like that, do you act like this at home too? Are your parents okay with this? Like, it's stuff like that that makes a kid kind of shaken up, right? Granted, it may make her respond even more rashly, right? But at some point, she's gonna have to start recognizing that the girls are not going to want to be around her if she continues to behave that way. And I don't think the response of the girl just being very passive 
is a healthy one either because when you're in school and you're learning how to be a person, just accepting bad behavior ends up being a real problem, right? You don't want to be a people pleaser. That's dangerous. Um, that's why I would start. Every day when I don't block people. <laughs> right. It's more of like the, why are you doing that? Like, what's making you do that? <laughs> like, just looking at her and sincerely asking that, like, what is that? Where's that coming from? That's a good from? point. I will pass that along. I think that's good. Yeah. You're like, just, just why? Why, why do you do that? Just, just why? And, and, then prob- and then probably she'll like break down and start like crying and be like, okay, I can't help. Go to the counselor. Like, yeah, that, that's like the kind of thing that's like make someone have some quick perspective. So that, that thanks to me. That's a good idea. I will pass that along. And here's, here's what I would do. I'm going to go old school. And parents and the child on what um, We're having trouble understanding you, Sean. Uh-oh. It's very hard. I, I said, have the parents come over and y'all hash it out. Oh, I don't think it's to that point yet. Like, it, it just seems like a little pit away stuff in school. Like, this, this is not like, from what I'm told, this this hasn't like risen to the level of like getting parents or principals or having like, you know, conferences with teachers. Like, th- this just seems like a little like pit away stuff. Um, I could be wrong, but like based on the information I have, um, yeah, it hasn't risen to any level like that. And I know, I know the answer is we'll catch it before it does. Um, but I mean, it just seems like a, categor- a categorical difference right now. Um, and, and probably for a good long while. Like this will probably go through the rest of middle school until they go into high school without it rising to that level. But yes, I'll keep that in mind. And I mean, that, that could be that could be very good advice. Yeah. How about you, Chris? JC's like, hey, dad. He um, called himself daddy discipline the other day. Yeah, let's hear this, Chris. <laughs> so yeah, JC's like, hey, there's these guys that are real big jerks. And they're always like, you know, uh, they, they actually like, want to be my friend, but then if they think I'm being friends with someone else, they like completely freak out, and, like call me names and curse me out. Uh, and, you know, again, it's not like they're like true enemies because they also want to be your friend. But when they don't feel like they're being my friends enough, then uh, or I'm being friends with someone else, then they curse me out and blah, blah, blah. And, and what would I do? Like, I know the answer is to get away from them, but I can't. I'm stuck with them. So do I just take it or do I like, I don't know, fight them? What do I do, Daddy Chris? But by the way, if anyone thinks it's weird, his name is Daddy Chris, which is weird on its own because what, why did you do that? Why did you change your name to Daddy on the title? Because That's... there is, you know, Isaiah, right? I, I've heard of the guy. Papa Kratos, what? right? So he was going by Papa Kratos. Oh, I thought Kratos. you meant the prophet. Okay. No, 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 no. He was going by, pa- he still goes by Papa Kratos. And okay. he was doing a debate with uh, some idiot. And, um, and so, uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to, this will be really funny. He's going to be Papa. I'll be Daddy. And then it just took on a life of its own. And then I had a whole bunch of Muslims talking to me because I went into this Muslim room and I was talking to those guys. And I had, I don't know, 10 or 15 grown, very aggressive Muslims calling me Daddy. And it was hilarious. And so I was like, well... This was really funny. I'm going to keep doing this. And then it just stuck for a while. It's been this way for like six months now, and everybody's been begging me to change my name. But the having grown Muslims that want to murder me, like call me daddy. Yeah, if they ever find you, your head's going to be on a pike at the city gate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, if you ever do change your name, it should be like Snake Bite or, or just Snake for short, or like Snake Bite Preacher. Brother okay, Nate. what's the answer? <laughs> The snake bite preacher changes no one for any man. Yeah, answer that question in the form of snake bite. How do you handle uh, discipline in the bayou? Or how would you tell your kid to deal with that situation? There was once a prophetic voice from beyond the veil that came to us in the form of a film. This film was called Mean Girls, and this <laughs> film gives you everything that you will need for life and godliness amongst mean girls. I, as the snakebite preacher, would highly suggest following the blessed virgin Lindsay Lohan into her <laughs> descent into madness with the so mean basically- girls. She should give this girl candy bars that are like extra calories. 
until she learns her lesson. Making the fat but that's girl. That's turning evil for evil, right? Yeah. So yeah, no, but uh, no, she should turn the other cheek because look, a gentle answer turns away wrath. If you want to get. Oh my gosh! Take your own advice. No, yeah, I know. Hey, have I not been lately? Hey, you you have actually been doing pretty good, which has made right? other people completely lose it. I know, which is hilarious because now Steph is losing it every day in here, and like I'm oh, just let's a not calm talk ill of people who aren't here. Wait, where is she? Oh, she's not here. Okay, well, yeah, it's been funny though. <laughs> well, it's like there's got to well, well, there's got to be someone off kilter, and everyone's just so used to it being Chris that. Whatever, Chris is just like taking a break. Like, I, I wonder how much is like you're really like all stoic and calm, or how much you're just like working on wires and just ignoring everyone. <laughs> but it's like someone, someone has to fill that role. No, nah, I've just been working on the stoicism, man. Plus, you know, um, V's already gone through most of the. Have you finished uh, Two Thousand Years of Christ Power yet, V? No, because I actually Volume got distracted. One. And I started reading something else, but I will. I was planning to paint today, so I was going to put it on. Paint? Are you a painter? Yeah. Oh, what do you paint? What, what kind of painting? All things. Um, I like to do murals primarily, especially like for like I don't know more fun stuff, kid stuff, kids' rooms, decor, that kind of stuff. Oh, that's neat. You should do like mm. your your rendering of what you think like a, a 1500s Renaissance Daddy Christophanus would look like. Ooh, yeah. One of the one of those like weird contorted things, kind of like Picasso with like elongated features. That's crazy because that's exactly what I started thinking of, like a yeah. collage of some sort. <laughs> or like or like Hieronymus Bosch. Well, Lucian, I would say to you, I did not know you were part of the fifth element of hip hop. What? You know the five. You don't know the five elements of hip hop, uh, Danny. We can't hear you. I mean, I heard it that time, but I man, I don't know. I, I want to help you, Sean. I don't know it's how we can help you. It's where I am. I'm in the woods. Is it? Is I just don't know. Like everyone else, we can hear like really good, but for some reason, like no matter what you do, it always sounds like faint and staticky and far off. I, 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 how do we help this guy? Let's get him an iPhone. I said help, not hurt. I was going to say, step one, figure out, is there anything uh, additional you're adding to your phone? Or is it just your phone microphone that you're speaking into? Uh, Sean, try to answer if you can. He says in chat in text chat he's in the woods, so it might be his connection. Yeah, but it's the, it's like the same exact thing every day, though. Like, I mean, well, I mean, there's slight differences, right? Like, if he's on the road, it just sounds like a. Vroom, 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 vroom. But I mean, it's always something. Like, if he's sitting still, then it's like a faint signal. If he's in the woods, I guess it's the static. If he's on the road, it's like there's always some kind of thing that prevents him from being like crystal clear, like everyone else is. I said I was in the woods. That was better. Yeah, much better now. Yeah, I'm not in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you must not have seen what I wrote in the chat. Just stay right there forever and never move. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm all over this country every day. So what were you trying to say now that we can hear you? The five something of hip hop. I said the I said Venusian is in can do you not know the five elements of hip hop? I, I, do, I not. do not. MC DJ break dancing, beatboxing, and graffiti. Are you saying that ah, the kids heard. get along better? <laughs> oh, about the painting thing. Uh huh. I used to have a tag in high school. It's been a while since I use it, but yeah, that was actually fun. Please? Good times. See? Yeah, it was like three years ago you used that, right? Yeah, of course. Where do freak off parties fit into hip hop? Would that be the sixth element? That's the P Diddy. 
that 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 goes long before P did it. That go back all the way to <clears throat> them that orgy that was had at that golden calf. That's where that go back to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello, uh, James and Random. What's up, guys? Just enjoying the morning. Hopefully, we can help with that. Random, how are you? Wait, wait. You need help? I need help enjoying my morning. What can you do to help me? Be our bright, cheery selves. I don't know. At least not do anything to make it work. James, I mean, obviously, one way we can be of assistance is to help you accept Jesus. Oh, okay. Yeah. How's that going to help me? I mean, without the mirth yeah. and merriment and, and mock jest, I mean, I don't know. Help your eternal Tons soul to live in a happy existence forever? Not to be nihilistic. Said, you know. Eight said the best three words ever. I don't know. There you go. Thank you, sir. That's like a transition, bro. You know that. It's like, I don't know, and then I talking, which clearly means I have uh, something I do know. Once again, trying to push your uh, ideology upon someone who doesn't hold any thought on it. And why do you guys like to do that? But like, no, no, hold on, hold on. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna answer this one. You're literally in this room, James. Sure. Don't, don't sure. be like that. that. Doesn't mean, that doesn't mean I want to become a believer. I'm interested in the believers. You know what I mean? Oh, you're interested in the believers. What's up? What you are you interested in? Like what do you want to know? Day. Let's crawl on a petri dish for I, I I am always curious as to the methodology of why you guys hold it to be so true. What you what do you currently well. believe in? Things that comport the reality. Like? Like climate change. And what's Sorry. your methodology for measuring that? Using the science or believing in it. You using the scientific method. Usually when I believe in something, it comports with the reality. Like I don't believe in things that are um not necessarily true, right? not necessarily true like some of the scientific methods being undone but no i currently believe in the things that do comport the reality things that are yet to be like things that are un unverified natural phenomenon i mean i i don't believe in it right until it can be something verified i'll, I'll believe in it right huh so you don't believe in black holes you know one's never actually been scientifically verified right um they do know they exist so therefore i believe in them i think they don't know all the ins and outs of the black hole but they've never actually been able to scientifically verify a black hole mainly Hang because on. of the challenges with the nature Hang of the black hole why, why, why are you challenging me on black holes i'd rather be challenged on things that i interact with on a day-to-day -day, right like uh, like reality the world in which i live in <clears throat> i don't live in a real in, in the areas of where black holes i'm going to interact with right yes i do realize that we we have a black hole in the center of our galaxy and it, at some point in time our, our whole solar system we sucked into it right so that has yet that's not how that works well so i'm just speaking layman terms as far as what i understand right don't quote me on things i'm not saying things that i know for certain so i comport with things that i interact with on a day to day so yeah well, okay. Well, now that you've clarified that, um, I guess we can proceed from that. But when you said, you know, things that comport with reality, like, I mean, all if you make a, anyone, whoever you is, makes absolute statements, I mean, that that's a very bad wedge to put yourself in because all it takes is one did defeater, I, right? Did I make an absolute statement? When you said things that comport with reality, and then we talk about black holes, and you're like, why are you talking about black holes? Because all we need is one example. So if you think you're like, well, well, things I interact with day, day to day. Okay, well, that clarified it better. Well, when you say all we need is one thing, what what are you trying to do with that one thing? Defeat your absolute claim. Okay, I didn't make an absolute claim, and why must you try to defeat me, James? Why are you so argumentative, man? I'm asking a question. You're the one trying to defeat me. That's sounds... I've answered it. I've answered it thrice. Okay, so you didn't answer me. Why do you want to defeat me? That's a question that's unanswered because you made a claim that seems so easily defeated we took 30 seconds and defeated it 
because it, I mean, it, otherwise, what are we? I, I like living in things that comport to reality too. And the the claim you just made did not comport to reality. So we spent thirty seconds showing you that you clarified, and now we're all ready to move on. No, it wasn't that I like living in things that comport with reality. I believe in things that comport with reality. There's a major difference there, right? Well, okay, but the claim you made did not comport with reality, and I also take your position that I like to whatever it was you said. I, I believe in things that comport what to reality. Claim, what but the claim, statement you made didn't. What claim did I make did not comport with reality, and I, I really made a claim that you whatever your original claim was that you know you believe in things that comport to reality, and they were like, "What about black holes?" You're like, "Oh, well, well, you know, things well, interact with day to day." And I, whoa, whoa, whoa! I said black holes do exist. That's all I said. And then Chris said, well, how do you know that? Can you verify it? One's never been verified. And you're like, okay, well, why are you talking about black holes? I'm talking about things the day to day. And then I'm like, okay, you've clarified. Let's so move on now. I personally can't verify a black hole. However, those that are in the know and have the capability to verify black holes, they can. Yeah, but you wanted to get away from it because you said you just want to deal with the things that you comport with from day to day and the things that you interact with. You, Yeah, you do. So great. Now what? What more questions well, do you want? Well, let's go back to the other thing where you're like, I don't know why you people want to push your beliefs on me, push your religion on me. I don't, yeah. I mean, if you find, if you find someone that does that, ask them as far as me. And as far as the Bible, it says, look, share the good news with people. So why would we want to do that? Well, we believe we have good news and we want to share good okay. news. Why would you well, hold on? Hold on. I, I, I got a whole sentence here. It's like, why would you want to not share good news? So it's not forcing to just tell someone about good news. So once I've told you about good news that you've heard a thousand times, you're like, oh, I reject your good news. I don't have a reason to believe your good news. And I'm like, okay, well, then following that, let's shake the dust from our feet and go on our way and, you know, leave you to your fate. So if someone wants to say that is forcing their beliefs on them, well, that's, that's incorrect use of the word. But if you find someone that's like, you need to be a Christian and I'm going to force you, um, well, then talk to that person. No, no, someone told me that I, I need, I could get better if I accepted Jesus. So to me, that is pushing your beliefs upon me. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Well, James, that like... was me. That was me that said that. I'm <laughs> right. an atheist. Like, well, I, I don't know. Oh, you don't know random? No, I do not know random. Oh, well, he's a, he's a fellow atheist that, that comes by here regularly. I like random. I've seen random, but I, didn't verify, I did not know random's position. Yeah, I'm, I'm an atheist. It's, it's, ran it's random. I got, 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 got. Random, why are you trying to push Christian beliefs on people? You know what? I just want to share the good news, Nate. <laughs> that was the right answer, right? If sincere, sure. I think you really think some people need Jesus, right? You know... Oh, I, I, I don't... I completely believe... Yeah. It's hard for me to say yes, but there are some people out there that like, man, any and any improvements, just a good thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's atheists that are like, look, even though they don't believe it, like, yeah, they would absolutely like love for for some of the worst of our society to get a belief in Jesus, if that meant like, you know, curtailing some of their bad societal behaviors. It's like, look, th they may not believe it, but they believe it would help these people if they believe it right like i've heard people say like if i didn't believe in god or if i didn't follow jesus i would more likely do this this and this and this and then i've heard people tell them well continue believing and continue living that way it's good for you so yeah in that regard even though it's uh, not necessarily a true thing to believe in but it, it helps them so that's a good thing i don't know what you're speaking about now did I, so did I, not, I repeated exactly what but Nate said, but my own words, and I, I confirmed that I've heard I've heard discussions of that nature. That's it. Do I speak Greek or something? But it's not, I'm not necessarily sure. a true thing to believe in. I don't think yeah. that they're saying that. If they're pushing people to Jesus, I think they've already decided Jesus exists. I, they just don't want to accept him, and I think that that's really part of the conversation. The point is, I would think like some people have a belief, and that belief is not necessarily true, and this belief even though it's not necessarily true, actually helps them. And someone can say, great, as long as you are doing good by holding that belief, continue holding that belief. Because they said if, if, if it came to that this belief was not true and I no longer believe it, I may act this way. So that's why some people will say, continue believing that because it helps you act a certain way. Do you understand me now? 
James. Yo. Calm down, bro. I am calm. Yeah. Also, I didn't. I was never confused. I just disagreed with what you articulated. So every so often, and, and maybe I can kind of like echo James's words. Um, every so often, when I have conversations, particularly with Christians, uh, we we have conversations about like the moralist morals, ethics, whatever. And uh, and every so often, they will say like, if it wasn't for my belief, it wasn't for my Christianity, I would do all of these bad things. Those words that come out of their mouth. Exactly. So, Venusian, what is it that you disagree with, with me? The thing that you articulated that bothered me more than anything was the fact that you said, in the midst of describing what it is that an atheist would also tell somebody else who is also a believer or not believer, especially when they're pushing them toward Jesus, like Random did to you, um, that essentially you also stated that even if Jesus is not real, but that's not what the atheist would be saying in that scenario, even if they are not articulating it directly that way. Sure, I, I agree. We're not going to say even if it's not. I mean, what I was prefacing, someone can have a belief that is not necessarily true, right? And that belief helps them. Are you following me? You keep talking to me like I was ever confused. I'm not confused. Well, I'm not pushing them to believe it. That's the, that's, I think that's the confusion, right? And so Random was just being tongue in cheek by telling me to accept Jesus. You understand that as well too, right? <laughs> but are you really bothered if you, if someone's like, hey man, James, uh, you know, you're, you're, you seem like a good guy. You're well put together, but you know, you, you're an atheist. Uh, I, I think God, God created you. It's God of the Bible, Christian God. Jesus has a better plan for your life, you know, follow him, receive eternal life, all this. Like, if someone says something similar to that, would you be, like, honestly that bothered? Like, man, you are pushing me, you're pressuring me, you're pushing me. Why do you do this? Just back off and leave me alone. Like, I, I think it, unless someone had a sword to my throat or, or was going to, like, seriously ostracize me for not, not letting them push me, I'd be like, okay, thank you, bye. Like, like Muslims every day or other religions or when they're like, <laughs> Hey, you should follow this. You should follow this. Like you could say, well, sure, they're pushing me, but like, uh, yeah. What's my response? Like, yeah, you're pushing me. I don't want it. Thanks. Bye. On a voice app, we talk about this in public. I say, hey, thanks. I don't believe that, and have a great day. Is I have no issue with that, right? What I have an issue with in in society when the, these belief systems are used to change laws and regulations and and things how people are to conduct themselves in. in in schools and whatnot that's where it becomes a problem well i would say um the time really for christians to make that case um would have been i don't know the 60s like now you may have correctly sort of identified a problem but you need to take that up with the after school satan club and muslims because mm -hmm. they're the ones who are leaning hard uh, to get their way and push their beliefs on people so i mean I think you're correctly identifying a problem, but the time to go after Christians has passed. The time for like the Muslims doing that is I'm not just going out. after. I'm not just going after Christians. Don't be defensive. I'm going uh, after any religious ideology group that wants to um, have it posted in schools for it to be read and followed by students and teachers who are pushing their beliefs upon students by mentioning it and repetitively every day in school that is like what... gender like gender transitions without parental consent and that stuff sure. like like what you're saying sure. yeah, you're you're like well that's, all religious ideologies what that's, you're like all, hold on that's where you You've... go with your your biases right i'm talking about religious ideologies right right but i'm i'm saying like if you're if you're trying to single out religious ideologies you're short-sighting yourself. Like everyone pushes. I, like think, oh, James, why are you interrupting me? Because I didn't. I, out. Because I didn't single out. Okay. You I, said religious ideologies. You're completely so ignoring secular ideologies. Okay. What are you talking about? Secular ideologies, like things that where people are pushing their virtues, they're pushing their stuff on you that is not religious. So you're like. You're acting like you're you're combating the any religious ideology that someone is pushing on you, but but why why is it a religious thing? Why isn't it all of the above thing? 
like anyone pushing ideologies on people, whether it's religious or not. I'll accept all the above thing. Sure. I'll accept all okay, the Okay. Sweet. Anyone else down there have any uh, questions or comments or whatever? Feel free to let us know in chat or anything else to talk about here. You guys on stage. We're waiting to hear what Daddy Discipline would say to um, the child <laughs> going through that. <laughs> I think he said just ignore him. I think he said just suck it up and take it. Yes. Wait, you serious? Just suck it up and take No, Chris. There's no, no way I mean, that's like, your answer. Look. The the best thing he to gets do, all this fire out on Clubhouse. Yeah, I mean, like I gave you the snake bite answer. I'll give you the real answer. The real answer is, look, you know, we need to find out what's really eating this kid. She probably has some stuff going on at home. You know, she's probably, you know, there's other factors at play here, and it's not an excuse for her behavior, but that is something that, um, that is something to take into account when, you know, dealing with somebody who is using abusive language like that for sure you know but would you guys agree with that or no yeah yes i mean hence the reason why i would have my child ask why are you doing that right yeah i mean i would i would definitely agree with that advice i mean you know there, there's just there's so many factors to these things um that i don't know i i feel like there is a way there is a way to there's a way to broach that topic with that child that can involve that child and you know like my son is learning right now you know he goes to an ostensibly christian school but what he's finding out is that most people there aren't christians and so he's looking at everything now as gospel opportunities like how can i get a gospel opportunity with you know such and such um and you know it's been actually really cool and edifying and so i think that if you broach the topic with your daughter like how can you get a gospel opportunity with this kid instead of calling her fat and unpopular you know that that would change the that would change the narrative surrounding that relationship right now how would you deal with a christian who's behaving badly that's the even better question well, I mean, it depends on the context, right? Is it a church? Then, you know, you go to the let's elder. Let's say clubhouse. Yeah, let's if make it's it like this an social online... setting, because this is where it's at, for real. What, in a what It's not like a, yeah, like this, like an online chat app, where you, you say you're Christians, there's no church structure, it's not like there's a spiritual authority over clubhouse or anything like that, like a pastor or elders, like you don't have that option here. Yeah, I mean, people behaving badly... I, I don't know. I mean, I, there's not really a good answer for that. You get offline and just ignore those people. I mean, like, yeah, just don't don't go where they are. Yeah, I mean, like, and ignore I don't, your name and titles. Yeah, I, like, I don't have any problems with people on Clubhouse because I just don't talk to them. <laughs> like, you know, that, honestly, I mean, now that's you know, in the last couple of months, I've taken that to heart. So, like, you know, the, the, the other thing too that you know, that I was doing wrong for a long time is that like, so for instance, I really despise liberal theology, but I've just taken on the Paul Washer, you know, false teachers are a judgment on false believers. And that has done me a world of good just thinking about that. So if that makes sense to anybody. Don't get involved with the drama. Don't pay the troll toll. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Am I always really good at it? No, you know. But it seems to, seems to me like that's the best choice. Are we not supposed to come alongside fellow believers and gently correct them, encourage them? Um, are we not also supposed to, as believers, be witnessing like repentance and forgiveness and, you know, all of that stuff too? Oh, well, sure. I, well, sure. I, mean, I mean, like, like the, you know, like the stuff I said, like, you know, in the past, like, you know, people have done everything they can think of. Like, you know, they, they have heart to hearts. They've come to Jesus meetings. They get a couple like other solid Christians try to talk to them. And usually like the, the people will be like, oh, you're right. Sometimes I just get away from myself. You know, I'll do better. I'll do better. 
and that becomes like a, a daily occurrence. They're like, oh, you're right, you're right, all right, but nothing ever changes. So yeah, it's it's, it's like I think the biblical answer is like, you know, after a couple times, like you know, just have nothing else to do with them. Except again, it's like the only way to have nothing else to do with them is basically quit the app because you're going to be in the same circles, you're going to run into them. So it's like, well, you know, how how literal do you want to follow the Bible thing? Like if it's in your personal life, get away. But I mean, you know, even though it's online, I mean that that's kind of like becomes people's personal life. So you know, th there's a lot of a lot of stuff to navigate there. But yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone who's got to that, like, just ignore them and leave them alone part and let them do whatever they're going to do has probably tried to, like, you know, send them messages, like, send them those verses, like, talk to them. Um, maybe that's a bad assumption on my part. I mean, I, I know goodness. Like, ba back in the day, like, we, we certainly, um, with the more rougher on the edges crowd, uh, tried to do that. And it was always the same thing, right? And, and it worked for, like, a day or two. And then, like, three days later, everyone's at each other's throats again. Okay, Nate, you said you've been doing this for at least 14 years now, right? That's a crazy it's, number, it's, by the way. It's I been a minute. Registered. Um, <laughs> Not on Clubhouse, well, other platforms. I agree. Too, I, yeah, I figured that. Um, but even in the midst of all of that, I just don't see how in the Bible we're told to just kind of like turn the other cheek to our brothers and sisters. Like, I don't see that that's always the response especially when it's like consistently bad behavior i think we're actually encouraged to lead with like gentleness right but correction and love and like we're supposed to actually like bear each other's burdens too no well sure, sure within I, I, the I context guess, of a local church i think that that's well, the difference like well well i guess my question for you v is is no one's disputing the process right like you know bear a burden share weight share scriptures, counsel, advice, you know, uh, things like that. Like, like no one seems to be disputing the process. My question for you is how, how long do you do that before you think this is not working? I'm doing the same thing with no result. Um, is your answer just never stop until the end of days, um, every single day, if that's what it takes, power through it and do the same thing every day or until they get sick of you and say, Hey, <laughs> I, 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 I can't handle you anymore. Just, just stop trying to help. Like, what's your answer? See, and so that's the thing. Y'all know I just came to phase last year, right? So oh, I did not. it's definitely the, yeah, well, <laughs> that's why I'm asking y'all because I'm looking for people who I've seen are mature, right? And I expect that maturity comes after a pretty reasonable amount of times. Like I was reading Hebrews, right? Like there's a expectation that Paul even, I don't even know who wrote Hebrews, but I assume it's, you know, anyway, whatever. It's the idea of there was an expectation of maturity and how long it should have taken, right? And so for me, I'm trying to, you know, make sense of what all the word is actually saying and how do we apply it for real, right? And the recognition of, I don't see a lot of people just as loud as that bad behavior was. I don't see the loud repentance. I don't see the, the let's come to Jesus moment, have the, you know, the peace pact and all that. I don't see those things happening. Like when and where do we apply those things as well as brothers and sisters in the faith? and I asked yesterday, um, do we stop being the church just because we're online? Like, how's that work? Oh, no, I, I, I wouldn't think so at all. I mean, I think you have a good head on your shoulders for this. Like, yes, all, all the scriptures, all the talking, all the stuff. Like, uh, and I mean, you know, if you haven't been around that long, I, I've seen many attempts uh, from the Christians here to, to reconcile, to go off in their own, own clans or groups and try to, like, you know, talk to their own, try to talk to other people, try to reach across the aisle. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I've seen it, but I mean, I mean, we're still doing know, that know. now. Like me and Rick are going to have a conversation on the phone probably today or tomorrow. You know, um, and then the, there's also like, you know, like uh, yeah, sometimes if there's a, I mean, it's, and, and you know, someone in, uh, messaged me too. It's like Romans 14, right? Like also don't, don't deny your own convictions. Right. So if someone is like, you know, been there, done that, it's like forgiveness, right? Like, you know, Jesus says, you know, you've been forgiving, you got to also forgive. So you, you have to forgive people. Um, but what does that look like? Forgiving someone who's like hurt you or is a huge thorn in your side doesn't mean uh, put yourself in that position to be hurt again by that person. If, if uh, you know, someone's like beating their spouse, well, you know, get the heck away, get safe. Um, and, you know, you should forgive that person. But that does not mean go back in into that relationship and let yourself, you know, get the crap beat out of you again. Like, so it's, it's so things can look different ways. Right. So forgiveness, no one disputes. The Bible says do it, do it. But that doesn't mean make yourself a punching bag. Um, same thing like this. Like if, if people have tried to reconcile and they just can't or whatever, 
Um, that doesn't mean they try every single day. Like maybe you need some time apart. Maybe take three months. Be like, look, we've tried every day and we just cannot get this on the same page. Um, they're never going to change. I'm never going to change. You know what? Maybe we can, but let's give it three months. Let's give it a month. And so, I mean, just because it, it looks a certain way from, from your perspective, um, you know, between all the discords and the Slack that uh, Chris created, uh, the Slack channel and like all these other things, like, yeah, there, there've been lots of like behind the scenes trying to meet together. And uh, I, I mean, I just don't know, right? Because I've got plenty of my own issues, um, but but this doesn't seem to be one of them. So maybe it's because I just take too much of a- You've got 99 attitude. problems, but it ain't one. <laughs> but it's like, maybe because I take too much of a nonchalant attitude and I'm like, Hey, look, you know, you're cursing up a storm. You're making uh, Christ have a bad, you're, you're bringing a bad example for Christ. You know the answer. You know, you know, a good servant and coral and all this other stuff. You know the verses. That's my advice. Um, so I don't know. I've also, who said yeah. it earlier, turn the other cheek? I said that. What is that practice in practice according to like the culture at the time? It means insults. Like if someone, if someone, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, Chris, in the context, it, it was like a Jewish thing, right? So like, I, I, I don't, it's not physical violence, right? If someone like slugs you in the cheek, it's not saying literally put your face back up there and turn the other cheek so they can hit you again. It's talking about like offense, like just general offense. Like, wow, that shirt makes you look ridiculous. Oh, uh, okay. And then you, you turn the other cheek, mean just, just let it go. Don't repay it. Don't be like, oh, yeah, well, you're fat. It means just take it on the chin, metaphorically, and go about your business. Chris, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that's talking about physical violence. Well, I mean, yeah, because Jesus Jesus also talks about self-defense, right? So, says, buy a sword. So, sell your crap and buy a sword. I mean, he literally says that to the disciples. So, However, I mean, I mean, there's I mean also, if, if someone did there's slap also me... I wouldn't run them through with a sword just for that. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> take, take this for what it's worth. Uh, but I was, in theory, according, depending on the person you talked to, was once a Christian. Um, and uh, when I taught people about the turn the other cheek, it had to do with kind of trivial things versus untrivial things, right? If somebody says something mean to you, it's kind of a trivial thing. Show your inner peace, show God by just not reacting the way that they think that you or everyone else normally reacts to it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Yep. Something akin to that, yeah. Right, because, because if you have God, if you have Jesus, you have this inner peace, right? And so, like, demonstrating that, showing that to other people, can be seen in different ways. And one of them can be seen in turning the other cheek. But again, atheist, so take that for what you will. <laughs> Christian and waiting, I prefer to think. <laughs> there are things that weren't. There are things that warrant reaction, and there are things that do not. Things that are life-threatening, for sure, protect yourself. Things that are, like Random said, minute to minuscule, walk away with a smile on your face. I mean, it also relates to, he, he, what I, the, the, the phrase in the Bible, now I can't for life me remember where it is. I want to say it's near the Sermon on the Mountain, though. Um, but it's uh, heat burning coals by essentially heat burning coals by being nice. I just refer to it as heap of burning coals on other people um, by just being nice when they're being mean. Yeah, you remember your Bible days well. Yeah, I mean, I mean the Bible is full of a lot of that, right? Like um, gentle answer turns away wrath. Uh, yeah, like do do kind of those who are like like being jerks to you, paraphrase. And yeah, in so doing, you heap burning coals up on their head, meaning like, you know, they're going to feel so guilty and ashamed that... um you know, perhaps they will change their ways. Hey, Connie, you wanted to say something? Yes. <laughs> I'm really curious, Chris, um, where does the Lord say to buy a sword? Um, 
I've never read that. Oh yeah, it's in the gospel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus uh, instructs well. his disciples. They're, yes. He's sending them out. He, he's sending them out on the, one of their mission journeys, and says, "You know, sell your cloak and buy a sword." Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab the verse for you in a second, Nick County. But yeah. Thanks. Because I've read that a bunch of times, I've never seen that. But that's not unusual. Reading the Bible, you know, things don't always hit you. Um, I'd like yeah. to know what that is. Kevin G um, says Luke twenty two thirty six. Okay. For the context, verses 35 and 38. Well, there you get, man, you're getting all kinds of answers, County. Well, my personal experience, you guys, is that very few people even practice turning the other cheek um, that I've noticed in my walk. And I've had a pretty long one now. And um, I highly recommend it. There is something solid that you get. You might find yourself in a position someday if you don't practice these words that are in the Bible, like turning the other cheek. And if somebody asks you to walk a mile, walk two miles. So you're required to walk that first mile when that was written. But Jesus is saying, if somebody asks you to do something that you're required to do, uh, give them double. If they ask you, you know. So this is a, this is most of the teaching is about, um, you know, submitting yourself to the words of Christ. I'll have to go look at that other. But I will tell you emphatically, if you don't practice turning the other cheek uh, in your real life, you might find yourself someday, as I have done several times, in a position where violence is occurring. And if you would react at that time, you would probably wind up either in jail or pretty bloodied. So sometimes, you, and you don't get that without practice. Just like you don't know how to act in a fire unless you had fire drills. So um, I highly recommend practicing turning the other cheek. It has saved me uh, a lot. Um, and I'm thinking of a time when I tried to get my mother-in-law out of a person's, an apartment next door. She was an alcoholic and the person next door was an alcoholic. And I had to go into the alcoholic's house to try and talk my mother-in-law and I, and I was, literally sucker punched and I couldn't react because I was in her house. If the cops had gotten called while I was in her house, I would have been the one going to jail, not her. But I was able to get my mother-in-law out of that situation. So did police get involved? Yeah, they did because she decided to come over to my mother-in-law's house because they were drunk and drunk people do drunk things. And at that point I was able to um, take charge of the situation in a different way. And I'm not gonna take you through that. Uh, because then it would look like I was bragging, but no, the, she she was taken to jail. So, I had but had the situation been reversed, and I had struck back at that time, then I would have been the one going to jail. I'm just saying, sometimes practicing turning the other cheek How long is a good she thing. Go to jail for? You think? Well, she lost her children because she was a pretty bad person. So I'm sorry that 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 happened to her, but on. Uh, my intervention, but my concern was uh, that my mother-in-law was being taken advantage of uh, buying alcohol for the lady next door, and she was using her car and stuff. So I don't that's, think that's that not, really that's matters. Not that's, that's not good. Well, go ahead and judge me. Uh, wouldn't be the first time, brother. Anyway, so I'm saying that practicing turning the other cheek has a huge benefit and not only that you get something really solid with it you can't put your put words to it but it gives you kind of you know it's a powerful thing to be able to control yourself and not fall into a hole somebody else has dug for you and i think that's what you get when you practice the words of god now i'm going to go read that about getting a sword because i've never seen that before and i've been right. thank you nate it's, it's one of my favorite hey, verses. Hang on a second. Oh, oh sorry, uh, it's Kevin, I thought it was the other guy. I was going to get to the other people that have been up here. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I mean, it's kind of the same principles, like, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword, right? If you're always like itching for a fight and like always the first one, like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, you're going to be the one everyone focuses on uh, versus, you know, if you don't necessarily want to live by that sword and you can take a chill pill every now and then, uh, things will probably go easier for you. But uh, Skew, what's up? You've been up here next in line. Do you have anything to say? Who? You. 
Right. So if you like turn the other cheek, doesn't it only matter if you have the power to destroy this person, but you choose not to? Because that can easily be interpreted as servitude or weakness. You know, so like turning the other cheek implies on both uh, sides of things, right? Um, it really shows uh, like the gratitude towards an, another person, uh, implying a failure towards uh, you. Well, and also, I mean, if you do have another topic, that's fine too. We don't have to stay on this one, just in case you had something else to say. Oh, that's cool. I, I just as, as I just joined the room. I'm trying to like just follow what you guys are talking about at this point. But yeah, thank, appreciate it. Well, sure. Yeah, if you guys have any new topic or whatever, we, we've been at this for a while. Just as Courtney's like, Nate, I'm ready to cook, and you're moving on. You're too fast. Yeah. What's up, Courtney? What well, I just want to know there, there's a weird pyramid scheme happening with the wars in the world right now, right? There's a kind of a weird pyramid scheme with a couple countries uh, that are in war right now, as we speak. So I just want to know if any of you guys are really into the political side of things. I want to know, is there going to be any sort of leak into the Western side um, that this war will be involved in other countries and cities around us? I mean, it's quite possible, but anyone that says they know for a fact is lying to themselves. So, uh, I mean, I don't know how we could answer that with any certainty. Because um, I don't think we've ever seen this many countries fight at once in, in decades. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to say, uh, you've heard of this thing called World War One and Two, but then you qualified it with decades. Um, sure. But like, theoretically speaking, um, the wars of today are very much outside of the realm of like what we're used to guerrilla warfare, right? It's not like humans in the past have always had like this guerrilla warfare mentality. You very much know when you're at war. Whereas today, I mean, we've theoretically been at war the whole time. But we, the people, don't see it because our governments are doing it. There's um, is it is this a sign from for the end times? Like, is this Ben? Yes, is this a sign for the end times? I very come on, man. It, I, 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 I was going to say right now that the, the, the uh, <laughs> Wait, what Tony, am I am I correct in saying that the human race has always been doomed? What happened? Been what happened? Much worse. Like, like human beings were like reduced to forty thousand oh. deep at one point. Bro, it's Rosh Hashanah. What are you doing? And then we what had like the Black Plague. What are you doing? Why do you do this? I'm just I'm asking you a question. Yeah, can can we can can Courtney fill Okay, us this in is here? Ben quote Dover. Ben Dover. This is Ben Dover. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. We we all watched the Simpsons. Who's ben yeah. Dover, bro. Uh, the 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 Jewish guy who fought with me for so long about Yeshua and now all of a sudden <laughs> no, supposedly no, no. This is not who you think it is. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is Big Dog T. Oh, sure, man. So I'm just wondering, like, I, I asked you a question, didn't answer. You think it's a sign of the end times? No one knows. No one knows. Okay, cool. But, but the, the kind of point is that I was making is that everything's a sign of the end times. And, and you think that, you know, the fact that you're alive is so important that this must be, like, the sign of the end times. Courtney, by I'm any chance, now. you live in a decently sized plot of land. What in the world? Do you like to hang out in gymnasiums with old naked men? Like, like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, like, what that? <laughs> what's that non sequitur about? I want to know. I want to know your psychology. Tell me. Good luck. We're still trying to figure this one out. Because that's a decently large living room. Okay. Yeah, can you put Whoa, him what? in the audience? Wait, wait. Which is... are you stalking her right now, dude? Which is uh, funny, but. Because I'm not even in my living room. <laughs> I know he's not talking about me because my living room's pretty small. He's probably on your social media or something. He'd never make it past your claymores. Uh, yeah, he's talking about the picture. He's talking about my PTR picture. It's like, know how I know you're not looking in my house right now? Get, you wouldn't be talking. Yeah, and my husband would be out there because um, he's home. It's Rosh Hashanah, so. So what's up, Kevin? 
Nothing. I'm just joining the fun. Just, uh, Bro, just hearing with, with you guys. I'm working, actually. That's the primary. This is getting just, weird like, in here, isn't it, Kevin? It is. It's always me being here. My bad, y'all. I got weirdos that follow me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Muslims want to make me their triple X slave. Uh, oh, he's blocked. He ain't coming back in any spaces we're in. He's blocked, blocked. Oh, okay, cool. He's just going to change his name. You know, he changed it. That's why I was like, wait a minute. Are you Ben? <laughs> this is wild. I don't get it. I mean, dude, I pray for your husband every day because, man, he's got a burden on his hands. So, you know. In what way? <laughs> Hold on. Let me go so he I'm can just... hear that. Babe! He must be outside. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He's got to hear you say that. Hold on. Well, she's got like good, like fully work and everything. It's amazing. Where's he at? Hold on. I'm going to yell. Oh, uh, you lost your husband. Just go into tall grass and bring plenty of Pokeballs. <laughs> Bro, where is he at? He just had come in there. Okay. Anyway. What, what is our topic now? Uh, Please give I'm, us I'm one. Just, give us a long, new one. The long okay, suffering of Courtney's here, husband. Okay, say it. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, just, I, was just telling, I was just telling your wife that I pray for you every day because, you know, Courtney. So. <laughs> well, I really appreciate that. I, I need all, I, all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> anyways we're talking to you know one of the the we're just in the room and ben was maybe is still orthodox jew kind of i don't know anyways he was like do you live on a good plot of land and everybody's like that's really weird why would you say that and he was like your living room looks really big and so the mods booted him from the room because he's like, are you stalking her? I'm like, no, he's not stalking me because if he was, my husband would be wondering what he's doing in our yard. Yeah, I thought he was asking so me Chris that question. Like, it, it made absolute zero sense. Yeah. How do I get someone to stalk me? Um, uh, how much do you want someone to... See, the thing is, it's kind of like... Anytime someone's... Mm-hmm. This is the problem mm-hmm. with, like, envy. Is that Trust every time you're like, you're, like, envious of something, it's like, well, how much of that thing that you envy do you want? Because there's always, like, the sword of Damocles, right? There's always that Faustian contract where it's like, yeah, I want this thing, but then I got to pay for it in this other weird way. You know, and that's one of them. I'll give you all of my stalkers you want them. I don't think anybody wants to trade stalkers. I mean, that might be fun for April Fool's Day, but I suggest keep your stalkers. That's the devil, you know, right? At least you know how they operate, and it's oh, yeah. true. Yeah, you don't want to get rid of your stalkers and find out they go up in value in the future. <laughs> Always buy, wow, buy the dips day. when the stalkers are low. Buy them when they're up. This hold, hold, hold your peace here. I need more coffee for this. It's S T O C K E R S stalkers. Stalk, he was stalker. Right. Yeah. He was, I got it. Yeah, see, I'll be here all week. And so will he. Yeah, try the veal. I did like three of those jokes today, like thinking, okay, the next joke is really going to land. And like, nope. Like, it just, it just today is not, it's not my day. I ordered this, this lunch called the farmer's wife chicken right and so when i ordered it i said don't tell the farmer I mean, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, right but the waiter the laughed. Dumb, dumb. he like humored me right he humored me he gave me a fucking uh, sorry i, I swear I, i'll try to do that he gave me a little uh, rim shot yeah so yeah, yeah, everybody. So uh, beyond the weird stocking stuff, uh, yeah. What else going on? V, did you I finish uh, looking at some of those resources I sent you? 
Who? I did. You want to fight today? Because we can. I mean, <laughs> I got even more. Oh, I, I, I would have thought that those resources would have settled that. Unfortunately, so. no. Because I'm still looking at the use of that word deacon in the Bible. And it's interesting how they flip flop between how when it's used in Greek and when it's used in English. So, wait, 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 wait. What were we talking about? Women's place in the yeah, church? Yeah, sometimes they translate deacon, right, to mean servant. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they translate it as exactly deacon. What was let me wait? Chris's point was shut up, women, sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, women yeah, in oh, the girl, old. I got you. It, Go to one the, of my videos. I got you. Courtney, the specific <laughs> context was one of the prophetesses in the Old Testament. Oh, we still have um, prophetesses in Chris the New was, Testament too, though. But yeah, Chris was. Yeah. Well, but but the content, the specific citation was the one in the Old Testament. And they were saying uh, they were asking something about that. And Chris was like, yeah, it's a judgment. It's not a good thing. Um, it was to humiliate them. Um, and then it got into like New Testament stuff. That is <clears throat> context. Yeah, I mean, it. it's not a common thing. Well, let's be real. It's not a common thing that women even want to do the things that men are typically more capable of doing. But it doesn't negate the fact that there are women that can do it and God has no problem with that, right? Um, I mean, can't... Bradley! Come on, man. Sorry, my husband's over here. You yelling at your husband like that? This is why, this is why I pray <laughs> yeah, for this whenever guy. That was a dog. Be... That had to be the dog. No, <laughs> whenever he's being him yeah so men yeah yeah so so why he gets oh first. i get it i get it so but, uh, that was a question i asked i think after everyone kind of left though like because v where are you going with that are, are we equating um like prophetesses and things like that to no, like no. lady pat well, to like lady pastors because it, it, depending on how we're defining prophet like um it's it's not like women can't be prophetesses anymore in 2024 it's like there are no prophets or prophetesses in 2024. So like that issue is a, is a wash as far as the office of prophet is concerned. But then if, if we're kind of like extrapolating that to like lady pastors, well, that, that's just a different category. Okay. So are, like if, if someone was like, well, you know, prophetess or prophetesses are cool in 2024. Women can be prophetesses. No one can be prophetesses or prophets. I hear what that, you're like, saying. And that's not at all what my point was. Okay. My point was one, do we acknowledge that there were, right? And what was this about, right? Because at first it started with the curiosity, like seriously, bro, they went to her and not Jeremiah or Zephaniah that were alive at the same time. That's wild. They listed her, her husband, his daddy, and everybody related to them and what they did and all kinds of stuff, right? They went through the whole thing when they introduced her. Um, then what she did was show, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's Old Testament, right? Then we went into New Testament, you know, we know we have Anna, then we have Philip's daughters and so on and so forth. Um, then what I'm seeing is the use of that deaconess and then also reading Romans 16 and seeing how women had a very important role in the church. And today it's almost like they've been knocked down to saying like, oh, they can't do such and such and such, but the Bible literally says that they can. Even though, even though I'm not saying that they should be dominating, domineering, or doing any of that kind of stuff, because nobody should, right? Nobody's supposed to be teaching anybody the Bible, beating them over the head. I don't think anybody should. That's not how you, you know, bring souls to Christ. However, there's also the recognition of why are we diminishing what that role is, and why would we not want to have people in the position who are equipped to do it or called to do it? So can we, can we just narrow the scope here so I, I assume we're talking about specifically uh this this is around deacon deaconess right like i don't think there's any question about profit because no one's a prophet and i i don't believe correct me if i'm wrong v there's any question about like lady pastors like you know when um you know like husband of one wife etc cetera, etc cetera, all the qualifications i mean most men can't even be pastors um so i i don't believe we're talking about pastors um, so are we just talking about the role of deacon? Is that where this? Yeah, where like why don't we see do, women can do stuff? Why don't we so see stuff women specifically deacon? Yeah, just like we saw it in the structure that out of Paul's own mouth, right, out of his own writing, in Romans or whoever wrote the letter, but it was him. Um, out of that, but, but like, but like Venusian, isn't the first wait, person? Why am I to getting see... interrupted? <clears throat> so I just want to make a point really quick, and I'll shut up. But like, 
wasn't Mary Magdalene the first person to see Jesus after he was resurrected? I agree. Like, with so the well, first I don't know if it was person Mary Magdalene, to see him, but it was definitely one of the Marys. Okay, whatever. So, so like, the, that, that's my point. So, isn't that enough? You know what I'm saying? I think it's important. I think the ministry of women is diminished today, right? And I think it's a little offensive to... But, but like, in what way? In the way of people saying that women can't teach they can't the Bible. Teach men. Like, Nobody says that well, women can't teach. They just well, can't teach that's, men. And but that is exactly that was crazy. Women. Okay, pause because they do it all the time. Also, Ooh. what do you suppose? Listen, if you go to seminary, are women not supposed to be able to teach? To teach what? Wi- younger, what? Wi- older women teach the younger women. It's literally a command in scripture. Like, I don't, there's nobody <laughs> running around saying that women can't teach. Like, my wife in has Titus. a seminary degree and she teaches women. I, I, I just, I'm confused. The I mean, there's, there's the confusion. The confusion is in that no one is negating that the vast majority of leaders would be male. No one's negating that. But Chris, what she's saying that you're negating is that there are women, specific women, not necessarily all women, <clears throat> but specific women that are called to do a specific thing and you're negating that position you're essentially stating that god will not use a woman god's used a donkey but he won't use a woman a woman to do what though because there's specific roles in the church and like nate was saying that there most men are disqualified (laughs) from serving as a pastor why would we say that that is open to women why it doesn't make any sense that right there that in that statement right there is you second class citizening women oh, no but, no it's wait, not me guys, uh, yeah yeah hang on i mean this this all comes okay this all comes down to like titus and timothy right it, it's how it's how right. it's how it's how strictly you follow the the church outline and, and you know by the way it's not saying like a, a woman can't teach a, a doctor in a hospital or nursing courts like none of this has to do with life like outside right. life this is specifically church structure and church order right so so it's how quickly or, or how um Give me just a second. Don't, don't don't like trail off too much. I'm just gonna read these whole things. They're they're pretty quick, but it's in Tides and Timothy. Just give me a second to find it, um, because I mean it, it all comes down to how closely you adhere to these scriptures. Just give me a second. Take a moment of silence. Um, oh my God, the almost. Okay. Who is not on mute? Bad daddy. Oh, Bad. sorry. Okay. So let's see. Um, First Timothy three one seven. First Timothy. I would just like to point out that you did, in fact, call another man daddy. I, I did that out of sarcasm, so I'm going to say it's fine. Okay. So First Timothy uh, one through seven. Uh, let's see. Paul, an apostle of um, Christ Jesus, command of hope, Lord and Savior, Timothy, uh, grace, mercy, and peace. Okay. Is this the right one? What? I don't know, male leadership. Do tell us. I'm not a pastor. Oh, three. First Timothy, three. See, I shouldn't be a pastor. Okay. So, um, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to be an overseer, i.e. pastor, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer is reading the note. Okay, an overseer must be one above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober minded, self controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace or into a snare of the devil. And then just for the record, deacons likewise must be dignified, uh, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greed, dishonest uh, or dishonest gain, 
They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Let, us, let them also be tested first, and let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives, for deacons, their wives, likewise, must be uh, dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things, let deacons uh, each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well, for those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also grant confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. So uh, the one in Titus basically says the same thing. Um, but it, it so it's not an argument of Chris hates women, for this reason anyway, or you know someone else is like all empowering women. It comes down to Titus and Timothy and how closely we adhere. So, I mean, I, I happen to read this very closely. So some people were disagreeing and saying, well, look at Paul. Paul wasn't married, and we can quibble about where he, whether he was or not, but he was not like the traditional office of a, a, of a pastor. He was an apostle, and maybe we can argue about that too, but pastors typically stay and care for a local flock. They don't take missionary journeys across half the world. So um, in, in the strictest sense, you wouldn't say Paul is the local pastor taking care of a local body of Christ. He was all over the place being a missionary. Um, so, so that, like, husband of one wife, and there's no ambiguity in, well, actually, this word means, it, it doesn't mean man, it means human, therefore women are human, therefore, like, there's none of that, because it, it sets them apart. It specifically says husband of one wife. So that phrase is indisputable. Um, so I, I would say that. So for me, I follow it very literal. So it's like, uh, you know, must manage their own household, must take care of their children. Oh, you want to be a pastor and you're a man, uh, but you don't have a wife? I don't believe you should be a pastor. You're a, you're a, you want to be a pastor? You're a man, but you don't have children? I don't believe you should be a pastor, according to this. I think it should be followed very strictly. And there's probably people who disagree, but I mean, it's not my interpretation. It's I'm reading and saying, do that. Um, I okay. Th I don't think that's the contention. I don't think the contention is about pastor. I think the contention is about digging. Well, it's about... It was about deacons, but I, I read the part about deacons, and it's the same thing. It says husband of one wife and talks about their household and their children and all that. Yeah, but there's other passages. That's what we're trying to get to, right? These, right, see. Right, but these so, other passages are just, whoa. like, when you take them exegetically. Oh, sorry, Courtney. Go ahead. I'm Hold sorry. on one second. I'm going to land. I promise. And the reason why, again, me personally, I would never want the job of a pastor. Nope. No, thank you. Nope. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I have way too much to do. Uh, that's my first priority. Uh, so taking on all of y'all's burdens in the church, like quite literally we're in a <laughs> church. I do not want that. Thank you. Um, I will leave that to the men. That's perfectly acceptable. But I think V and I are saying like, you're kind of essentially, and I don't think you are Nate, but like some men, and I'm, I'd be curious about you, Chris, are essentially saying that the position of a woman is to be like 10 foot behind her husband, head down, taking care of the children. And by the way, if you spread any of the gospel to anyone other than young children, i.e. boys, very impressionable boys that will then grow up to be men, by the way, um, and women, um, you're outside the bounds of what God has established. And that's where I think my contention lies. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think anybody's saying that. Okay, like, great. Again, my wife teaches my wife has a, an actual seminary degree from an actual accredited seminary has a master's degree um she teaches women um and she teaches specifically hermeneutics so like you know at, older women teach the younger women like she's been waiting to get older so that she could teach younger women you know like this is a thing for her so i think that I think that it's really easy to straw man everybody's positions. Um, I sent V a really good article, just 10 questions for complementary or for egalitarians. Um, and I don't think anybody here is actually advocating for the yeah, egalitarian. I'm not position. an egalitarian either. I, I don't, uh, I don't see that either. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that the main contention is look, God has a high, uh, calling for women. Um, in fact, MacArthur actually has a book called God's High Calling for Women. <laughs> you know, call me crazy. Um, but that's that's essentially what he's saying is like God has a high calling for women. We need to respect that role. And part of that is like what you're saying is you raise your kids. You do all the other stuff that is, you know, there for, um, you know, women to do. 
um, but also teaching children, you know, teaching boys, you know, whether they, you know, be teenagers or what have you. Um, but yeah, I don't, again, I don't think there's anybody who's, I don't think that anybody's advocating for relegating women to some type of second class citizen. Like, that's just not what's happening. I, I think well, that when we say you, the office of deacon, which is simply a, in the New Testament, at least, the office of deacon was simply for, um, you know, serving, right? It was just, it was like, hey, I'm going to serve these tables. I'm going to, you know, do these things, um, you know, based on what they're teaching in the, in the New Testament. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just was don't one see... Of them. I'm sorry. Right, BB was one of them. But again, but again, in the office by Paul's like, I don't, own words, like, that's debatable. Romans. But again, but you keep saying that. But like when I asked you to demonstrate that he said the office of deacon, you can't do it from the text. It's a, well. It's, where does he say office in this section of the text? Yeah, well, that's because, the thing. Is I, I feel like okay, fine. If you're wanting to make it an office. But Paul's not even going into that. Paul is, the okay, so here's what we can't do. We can't negate that she was a deacon of some sort. Now, if you want to say that she servant. was a deacon. Sure. No, 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 not just like I wash your feet, Chris. Not like that, bro. Like, if you want to say that it only means a servant in this realm, that women, like deacon quite literally means to serve, like, because, you know, the acts and what are we going to do? The apostles yeah. are trying to preach and, uh, well, well, what are we going to do? We can't take away from preaching the gospel to serve people. Um, so, well, that's also a job for men. So men should be out there washing your feet, Chris. So, okay, let's just, well, let's we'll stop and think about this. But if you want to say that the job of deacon in the way that Paul is, applauding phoebe that it was only like an evangelical moving out away from a church not in a structured formal office with her name on it fine bro because there's nothing in the bible that literally says and she had an office with her name on it and then thus that's the place of a deacon like there was nothing well, but she had a nameplate it was an office yeah. it was a corner I, <laughs> room. I, think the, I think the thing that can shed some light though is you know if you take the totality of scripture right so what what we read from timothy and titus is you know at least timothy that i read is deacons need to be the husband of one wife so we know that right so husband of one wife then if Phoebe is called a deacon or deaconess, um, what I mean, it's like, what can we infer? And I, I feel like pretty easily, like, what can we infer from that? Um, Phoebe could not be some sort of like, you know, deacon in this sense, because she is not the husband of one wife, but she nonetheless is called a, a deaconess. So, I mean, that, that seems like the inference is really simple, that she was a servant and she was a deaconess in the sense of the word servant. She served. Maybe she didn't wash feet. Maybe she, I don't know. Maybe she cleaned the parking lot. I, I don't know. Like there's plenty of servant positions in a church. So <laughs> we, we, we do know she was a, maybe she stacks tables and chairs. Um, you know, by that, by that stance, there's lots of, you know, we call it a serve team today, but if it was a hundred years ago, we may, or 200 years ago, we may call them servants. All the, all the youth, all the women, all the men who set up tables, set down chairs, all that stuff, the parking lot attendants would be like, oh, yeah, they're all deacons. Like now in our modern speak, we just say they're, they're servants or it's a serve team or you're serving. So, you know, Phoebe and a bunch of kids, men, all of them could have been like, quote, deacons in that sense. But it seems like they could not have been deacons in the sense of First Timothy because they are not husbands of one wife and all the other qualifications. All right. But, so wait, so uh, or before they we go there, deacon. wait, hang on one second. Go ahead. Can somebody address Nick in the comments, or are we just going to allow him to just say that? I what's Nick saying? I haven't been reading. I don't know. What did Nick uh, say? I'm not. I'm not paying attention to the boss, Bossy, stubborn women don't like not the submissive role. Am I reading that? Bossy, stubborn women don't like not the submissive role. No, bro. He, the Bible he gives them. Imagine that. Bossy women don't like correction. Oh well, let me. Kind of, I, I know Courtney, I think, was talking, but but along those lines, I think that's that's kind of a thing, right? Like whenever I mean, I mean, I know we're arguing here just for intellectualness. I don't think anyone wants to be a lady pastor or deacon. I don't think any of the guys want to be pastors. Otherwise, we would have tried. But I see you, Felix. We'll get to you in a second. Um, 
but also there there is a uh, if someone was actually arguing for a lady pastor because they want to be a lady pastor i always think like is this a pride issue because like why why does someone need a title unless they're genuinely confused or certain that they're right about the bible in this like it's like well why do you need that title because they act like it's like the highest measure someone can uh, receive of like spirituality to like be be a pastor it's like no a, a pastor is a, a burdensome demanding job it is a high calling in a spiritual position but it's not the most the, the most high calling a christian can have is to share the gospel like a woman a child anyone who can say jesus is lord and give the gospel that's the highest calling any christian can have so a, a lower position than that would be like a pastor an elder a deacon i mean you know they still have the highest calling which is share the gospel but you know preaching a funeral or visiting someone in a hospital or taking care of the flock and doing marriage counseling, that's not the highest calling a Christian have. It's to share the gospel. Just wanted to make that point. So Nick, I feel like if you want to say something, you absolutely should raise your hand and come up here and actually say it to us. Also, I think it's super passive aggressive and quite feminine what you're doing currently in the chat. So yeah. you know. Say it with your chest, Nick. Uh, well, hang on. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. So, like, okay. Wait, 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 just so he knows, like, this, this, this bossy female, my husband's present, Nick. If you want to say it to my husband, because it's Rosh Hashanah, he's home today, you could say it to my husband. Do you want to say it okay, to my and, husband? Okay, and, and he may, but hold on, I, I told Felix we get to him. Nick is on stage, so Nick will, Nick will go in a second, but Felix, I, I told him he could uh, speak, he had his hand up. Felix, what do you want to say? Two, two things. Two things. Where is the associate pastor of Ask a Christian Steph? And <laughs> also, uh, V is not going to let it go, Nate and, and Chris, because she has way too much sofrito and sazon in her system. I'm just let me just say it. It okay, burns um, her blood. What is, what, okay. Wait, what does that mean? This is like the whole Spanish thing, right? Did you say testosterone? <laughs> is no, I said, said. Is that the word? sofrito and sazon. What does that mean? That's the condiments we use in our food. It gives it the oh, flavor. So spicy, spicy oh, food. I know what sofrito is. Yeah, well, she's, oh, in okay. other words, she's, she's a Puerto Rican. <laughs> That's pretty okay. good. Okay, so uh, I guess go for it, Nick. What, what did you want yeah, to say? What, yeah, I mean, anytime this topic's brought up when certain people, I've seen Courtney or whatever, they always kind of, you know, go against the idea that women can't hold these offices or whatever. And it's, it's just the pattern. Like certain people in there are like that. And you look and she is. She has her own podcast. She's kind of assertive. She's kind of bossy. And women like that and women like Steph don't like this kind of role for women. And it's, it's just, you know, that's just a pattern. OK, so are men yeah. not going to check him? It, it's, it's good. It's good. Hold on. Nick, I'm going to go to the back room where my husband is at, and I'd like you to say that to my husband about his wife. Okay. I'm so confused by this, everyone. Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah, because I, so, like, I feel like you want to come on here and teach. Hold on, Nick. Hold on, Nick. Wait, wait, wait. You, you like want to come on here and teach something? Wait, wait, wait. Because you, you, you came want to come in immediately here? stating that V and I, or no, V, or I don't know about V, but Steph, myself in particular, me, wanted the place of a pastor. Now, Nate, did I say I wanted the place of a pastor? Wait, where did I say you want the place of a pastor? Did you or did you not? By the way, you're on replays, and this is going to go on YouTube. When did I mention did the you word or pastor? Did you not say that w Courtney, people like Courtney, want, there you go in the chat, he did. Ah, I didn't say it, pastor. No, 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 but what are we talking <laughs> about, sir? What are we talking about, sir? You were talking about uh, that woman wasn't just a deacon. She wasn't just a deaconess. Nope, that is not what I said. So I, every blunt here is a prime example why all men should not be pastors, because this man would have just led the flock astray right over the edge. Um, How is that? Let's see. Because that, that is not what I said. Hey, anybody on chat, did, did I say that she was, no, 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 is Nick, I what need you to admit you're wrong. What were you Little what boys don't like thinking? to, I, listen, my 13 year old sometimes doesn't like to admit when he's been, you know, taken to task and wrong. Well, tell me what you said. No, I'd like you to figure it out, sir. Read the room while you're up hey, here v, condemning the, the women. the first conversation of the day? While you're up here condemning the women. And by the way, my quote podcast, I'm not in a church. 
When I go to church, I listen to a man pastor. I listen to a man rabbi. So I'd like you to either figure out where the condemnation is, where I should be corrected, because nowhere in the Bible does it say women can't preach the gospel. In no, fact, no, we're not Romans that was 16. Wrong. Man, I, I didn't say you, you were wrong not for fixing a gaslight this whole room. You are not no, about no, no, to no. gaslight this whole room. So I'm not, she's got her own podcast. And she's no, I didn't say you were wrong for having a podcast, and you're, so, you're demonstrating what I'm talking about right now. Whoa, back it like, up, you, back you, it up, you, back it up. You, you what was your point bringing it up? What was your point in bringing it up then? Why I'm is it saying you, you, because certain people like to have this role of teacher, and mm -hmm. you seem to like to do that on your podcast. Okay, I'm not Nick? saying that's a pastor's role, but I'm saying you do take kind of an independent thing, doing your own teaching. Steph uh -huh. kind of likes to, she likes to have rooms and she likes to be in control. She likes to be the boss. Uh -huh. Certain women on uh -huh. here have a kind of bossy attitude and uh -huh. they like to be in the rooms and they like to be in a boss. And when this topic hey. comes up, they okay. kind of don't like people talking about the roles of women. That, no, that's, no, no, that no. is Nick. a pattern. No, okay, wonderful. Nick, uh, would you like to take over the role of countering anti-missionary, sir? Would you like to de defend Jesus against an Orthodox Jew? Because let me step aside so that some of you men could do Wait, it. When, I'd love. when, have, when have like I said, that? would you like to do that? Said, would you, you like to do that? Do you, you're, you're saying something I didn't say. Would you like um, to do what that? What I am saying is people who generally have their own teaching, like Cherry, she has her own uh, thing too on YouTube. My she own likes to teaching. My yeah, own you, teaching. You don't, you don't teach on your channel? My, my, what does my own teaching mean? Their own teaching ministry. You don't have that kind of on your channel? That's not I what don't, that is? I don't have a teaching ministry. You have don't I teach on people? your YouTube channel. Have I taught people? Sure. Yeah, my that's goal a ministry. Is to... Whether you call it that or but not, fine, that's a ministry. Fine, I'm not negating that. But I'm asking you, would you like to, would you, I can, sir, I will hang up my hat. No more biblical apologetics if Nick will take charge of countering Orthodox Jews and not get completely annihilated by the Orthodox even, you Jews. Would even, you like you to can't do even, that? You can't even accurately represent what I'm actually saying. Would I'm saying women who, have these, us from the women, who have, women who like these roles of teacher and they have their own little ministry, they have their own little thing, mm -hmm. they do not like okay. it when the topic of women's role in the church comes up. Women's role in the church it. isn't Guns a problem pattern. for myself, Steph, or V. It you is. are complete. No, it's sir. You have misread the room from the beginning. What were you disagreeing with Chris about? Uh, there's no disagreement Chris? between Chris. Even Chris will tell you. I did not. Uh, Chris, did I say I wanted the role of a pastor? No, we're not talking about the role of a pastor. Did I say, okay, hold on. We're going to go through the, did I say, did no, I not I concede just... that if you're saying the office of a deacon is for a man, and Phoebe didn't have that title as the, quote, role in the church. Did I not concede to that? Look at V, she's got her, th did I not concede to that? I said, yes, Chris, yeah. I think, I think, uh, I think he's talking about what was initially talked about, right? So uh, when we're talking about should women teach, it was the first thing V brought up. Chris says, yeah, they can teach for other women, right? I, I guess what Nick is saying is that anytime this topic comes up, is always his his words now. Anytime this topic comes up, it's always from a woman who is very uh, 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 either aggressive, have I in energy, or you know she just uh, <laughs> and she don't like the idea of being put in the second seat or not being on the same level as a man. Submission is the word he used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's kind of getting that. You know, why does this topic always come up every time a woman is offended when she's told women should be quiet in the church? I'd just like to take a uh, moment to ask, uh, 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 yeah, I'd, I'd just like to take a moment to ask uh, co-lead pastor Steph if she'd like to jump up here. <laughs> uh, Steph, everyone's talking about whether or not women can be pastors and everyone's arguing like cats and dogs when no woman here actually wants to be a female pastor. That's what's happening. Hang on. Hang on, Nick. And Chris Nick, may or may not. Did I women. not ask more than once if any of the men were going to check him for what he said? Yes. And none of y'all so, checked so, him. Wait, wait, wait. So I wanted to address that. Well, it's hard to check when three people are talking at once. One, um, it, it's an open forum. I'm of the mind, like, you know, uh, consider this my, my feminist move for the day about woman empowerment. Um, women can speak for themselves. You guys can be fierce, brave creatures 
So as the moderator of this room, sometimes very poorly, um, I'm, I'm allowing people to defend themselves. So, I mean, if you, if you want to, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't even if you asked me, but I mean, it's like, you know, people can speak for themselves. I, I have a pretty free flowing. I try not to censor anyone. So, I mean, you know, if Courtney's like, Nate, please help me out. He just did this. I cannot speak for myself. I need a man to save me. I still probably wouldn't because that's lame, but I, I know the people in this room and they would be the first one to be like, no, Nate, I got this. You don't, I don't need you to defend me. So there's that. So I don't, I don't think men need to um, correct him. And, and by the way, like I, I, I mean, as far as correction goes, I'll give my opinion, which I've already gave, right? I've already given it. So like, I have nothing more to say. Um, but I mean, you know, if, if someone feels so, so threatened or, you know, something like that, that they would like a moderator to step in, I, I mean, I, I would probably just say, excuse yourself from the room. Like I don't want to censor people or, or anything like that. So um, I don't think that's out of line. I think that's consistent with how I kind of run these rooms. Um, but, but yeah, if someone is uncomfortable or something in a conversation, uh, let me know and maybe I'll try to reset the room or make peace. But no, I know Courtney, uh, V, I don't know, I don't know you as well, but I have a feeling you're, you're kind of the same line of Courtney where you're like, no, I don't need no man to stick up for me. I got this. Am yeah, I right? Can I... In assuming that? I need a man to stick up for me, Nate. <laughs> Well, no, leave the room. Re leave the okay. room, Snowflake. Uh, wrong room, bro. <laughs> well, what's interesting is men, and I got you, Kevin. What's interesting is men, here's the thing. Men want to be leaders until it comes time to be in leaders. Sometime, and I think that's what V's trying to get the men okay. here to us. So well, let me, okay, well, well, let me do this then. So, um, and first of all, I also wanted to say for co-lead Pastor Steph in the chat, that's a good point, Steph. I wanted to make that earlier, but it got away from me. Uh, but thank you for bringing it up. It, it's not an ability thing. V said this a long time ago, uh, near the beginning. Like, wouldn't you want a woman who's qualified? And I, I imagine the other, the end of that, if she would have finished that thought, would have been, wouldn't you rather have a woman who's qualified and can has the ability to teach and lead more than a man that has does not have the same skill set? And the answer is, well, biblically speaking, it's no, because you know, man's wisdom is is, is flawed compared to God's wisdom. So it's like, well, God used all kinds of flawed people. Look look at them in, in the Bible. Like, look at them today. Like, God uses flawed, unqualified people. So it's not he calls the, he calls the qualified, he qualifies the called. So, you know, no. If, if someone has a, has the ability to do something better, you would, you would sacrifice their natural ability to do something um, to follow scripture. Um, so, you know, and if you dispute scripture and say, well, no, it's fine for women, then we just disagree. But no. So if there's like a man who's not as on point as a woman, you would still pick that person because God, maybe he, God's going to, the guy's going to boast in his weakness. Maybe God's going to use the less technically qualified person and God's going to like do a much greater work through that person that you don't deem as qualified as the woman just because obedience. What is, is the thing? It's like obedience. I require more than sacrifice or something mm -hmm. like that. But like okay. So let, so yeah. So, so let me correct Nick. Okay. Which is not much of a correction. Um, okay, let, let me just go from what I remember. So Nick came in saying something like, um, you know, bossy women don't like authority or something like that, or, or they're too proud or haughty. And I would say, well, Nick, if I'm giving you a critique, maybe you came in, you know, guns blazing a little, uh, a little fiery, more fiery than I would. Um, but I don't think you're completely wrong that usually when this is brought up, it seems to be, you know, women who are very passionate about the topic. And, um, you know, it's usually because they are taking a side of, uh, not egalitarian ship, but women can certainly lead and teach and be deaconesses or pastors and be in these roles. So I'd be like, Nick, uh, the, the spirit of what you're saying, I don't think is wrong. The way in which it was said, I don't know if you're trying to make friends and have people not push back against you so hard. Maybe you could have said it with a little, um, you know, a little softer. That would be my honest critique. Yeah. So there you go, Nick. That. Take that for I, whatever I it's worth. That. I can agree with that. It's just Oh, when I can't first thing I come in and I hear him talking about and it's about women and teaching and I already know what it's about. When I see certain people on stage, I'm like, okay, there's Courtney. I already know what, what they're probably arguing about. And it's like it's always the same thing. Like if I just saw certain other people up here, it's like, okay, that's probably what they're talking about. I did get a little irritated, but here's the thing, you said if if a woman is more qualified, like able, whatever I don't think God gifts people for things he hasn't called them to do. God does not gift women for that role of pastor uh, because he hasn't called them to do that. And people make that argument. But here's the thing. Look at a bunch of women pastors and you'll see all of them are horrible teachers. Like, I don't know of a woman who, have, who has taken the lead role of a pastor 
who is not a heretical teacher? I don't know of a single one who has taken the lead role. Now there are women who teach in their in their right spot as as women or or children or whatever. There's some good women teachers like that. But any woman, any single woman I know that has taken the role of a pastor is a false teacher. I don't know of a single one. And some people have mentioned some. I've looked them up, and they've completely twisted those texts about women keeping silent in the church, this and that. Like they're just horrible teachers. So I don't believe God gifts people for ministries He has not called them to. So a man who they who they who seems to be less of a good teacher, I'd say he's not qualified because one of the one of the qualifications of pastor is ability to teach and refute those who contradict. If the man can't do that, maybe it's not an office for him. But it's definitely not an office for a woman who we think is a better teacher. We need to find a different man. So, yeah, saying God equips people for roles he hasn't called them to, he, he doesn't do that. He doesn't He doesn't gift people. Pa the pastorate is a gift. It's more than just being able to teach. It is a gift for that office, and it is a gift by the Spirit. And God doesn't give that gift of the Spirit to people he hasn't called to that role. Now that the temperature seems to have slightly lowered, uh, it hasn't. Um, I'm gonna say it this. hasn't. <laughs> Are you making like food? I actually <laughs> asked the men to step in because I would prefer that a man actually correct bad behavior than me having to correct it because then that's them yep. saying, Oh, you're usurping your authority, you're just, all yeah. that kind of the stuff. Then the claim TV. stands at that point. I literally asked y'all to do it. Second of all, everything wait, you just said had not nothing to do, do with that? the actual conversation that we actually had because. How many times did any of us say that we wanted to be a pastor? At what point did we say we wanted to be a pastor? I'm waiting for it. Because I think Chris and Nate and Kevin all heard us say, no, we don't feel like that needs to be a thing. I don't think that. For the record, Nate and Chris and Kevin and everybody else up in here, like, come on now. This is silly. Also, for you to speak for me, Nate, and say, that I I come off like the type, yeah, I could defend myself, but I asked for men to step in to correct your own brother. You fixed okay, it. Okay, so, so hold on. So first of all, like Chris said, rightly, is that not what I did? And second of all, I made the point multiple times that none of the women in this room are arguing from a position that they want to be in one of these leadership yeah, roles. Yeah, you did, but it, it feels like I'm still listening. catching flack. How am I doing no, that? No, like, no, I, no, I, no, no, well, no, no, whatever. no, 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 What I'm giving you flack about is because when you said you come off like the type who doesn't feel like she, no, I asked y'all to correct him. I asked you. That was the first thing that came out of my mouth. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard that. This is one of those cases of like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, I didn't, because if I would, you'd be like, why are you speaking? Not you, but someone undoubtedly listening or something would be like, oh, why is he mansplaining? Why isn't he letting her fight her battles? Like, you know, that would happen. Okay, so, you I know, hear you. no matter but what, also, I'm, but, but then you said, what, what, exactly wait, 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 what last, I saw. last thing. But then when you said I didn't correct Nick, and I, I did, and Nick's like, you're right. I could have came in a little softer. Like, he, he was challenged. He conceded, and everyone was happy, except now no, we're rehashing No, because then it, he so. went on to go on and say a whole point that none of us even wanted here. No, and no, also, he Nate, insulted Nate Courtney. He something. said, whenever I see certain people on stage like Courtney, I just start assuming that, that, that. And, like, yeah, it was like no, he wasn't no, even listening at all. Yeah, that, and he I just said, said I pattern. don't talk crap about women, only some women. I mean, I'm not going to get in my feelings about Nick, some North Alabamian talking crap about another... <laughs> Ain't wow. nobody, ain't nobody worried about Nick. I'm just being honest. I mean, it's, I've already shown that Nick, one, doesn't have the capabilities of being a pastor, two, talks crap about people when they're not in the room and has done this with Steph and PSA and other things for which I've had to defend her on. And <laughs> like, so I think it's just, I think what we're seeing here is Nick is projecting emotional instability on the females in this room when it's he himself that's the one that's emotionally instability but i mean yeah, that's, that's just my personal opinion well i mean well i mean the the okay wait, wait. Okay, okay okay wait wait stop okay this topic is done sorry courtney i'm not letting you cook okay. this is ridiculous like starting starting with v's very first topic of the day what do you do with christians when they behave badly welcome to my world um so <laughs> so it's like now we're making like now we're making like like catty passive aggressive attacks. By the way, Nick, can you clarify? The women have clarified. Can you clarify, Nick? Do you have any aspirations to want to be a male pastor at all? No, I, I wouldn't Great. mind. So no one in this room having this discussion wants to be a pastor or in the, one of these leadership roles. 
we're simply talking about intellectual um, theology, which is important to flesh out, but everyone needs a reset when it becomes this like backbiting, like fat, like, like personal attacks and stuff like that. Um, and also remember, this is not a salvation issue. So we're, we're like having a knockdown drag out. All the atheists are like popcorn and glasses, like, like loving it. Not that it matters for them, but I mean, you know, shout out atheists. But I mean, like, what are we doing? Like when it goes from like intellectual discussion to like what's happening now, this is not good. And yes, I'm awful and I share a part for just allowing this. But I mean, you know, I've got my own issues to work on. One so, quick, quick clar clarification. When she, when she said I was responding to something nobody was talking about, I was responding to something you said, Nate, when you were talking to me. You said, what if there's a woman who's more equipped but a man who's not? I was responding to that statement. Not saying that anyone here said that, but I thought you said someone who said that. I was responding to what you said, not yeah, yeah. something... It, it was a point V made, like, uh, she made, like, half of the point. Um, so I went ahead and took it to its conclusion, not from that's where she was going, but because it's a very common thing, usually among atheists. Um, so I, I don't know if she was going to do that, because she didn't, she, but she, like, started that point at the very beginning of this. So I went ahead and just made a point on that. So, yeah, um, he did say that, and that is what he was doing, and that is why I did what I did. So, yeah, we're all good. Everything's good. Right? Everything's good, right? We're all, we're all friends. Oh, yeah. See, the great thing about me is, uh, yeah, I'm a woman, but I'm not super emotional. I don't really care. Tomorrow, I'm going to kick it with you guys. No big deal. Roll off my back like a duck. So, yeah. All right. Whew. Yeah. But and look, the original discussion before we got off track, you know, was, and I, I think we can be done with this right now, but like, so, so V, I think that, you know, there can be an argument made for women deaconesses. Um, I do not hold that view, but I am not going to separate with someone who does. I think that when we're talking about women pastors, that's a different story. Do we both agree on that? I agree with you. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But the, you know, but then the other thing too is like, you know, what is the role of a deacon? You know, and so in some Southern Baptist churches, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been Southern Baptist, uh -huh. the deacons are actually the board. And so the reason Southern Baptists don't have women deaconesses is they are the ones with all the voting power and pastors get no votes, which is a ridiculous way to run a church. Don't get me wrong. I think it's the most unbiblical, ridiculous um, church polity out there. But like, you know, there, there it is. Yeah. Um, What's interesting is like some of them, I've seen them structure it like where it's, um, you know, pulling out chairs, setting things up because, you know, we're going into like the book of Acts and we see again that the apostles are too busy to stop spreading the gospel because they're going out and spreading it. And like, how are you? How are you taking care of the the Hebrews because they're the Jews are complaining against the going? Well, the Hellenistic Jews aren't getting anything. Um, the the Hebraic Jews are. Well, the apostles don't have time to just stop and do that and also preach the gospel. So the quote deacons of that would be men. So those would be the men cooking and cleaning and. <laughs> And it's so funny because when you're like, okay, so y'all be the ones cooking and cleaning and doing all the, the servitude stuff because that's what they're complaining against in the book of Acts. But all of a sudden, it turns to, well, we don't want to do that. You want to cook? No, man, I don't know how to cook. You can get your wife to cook. Maybe she can help. <laughs> and then it's, let's appeal to the women. So I've seen that happen in the church. But technically, the role is of a man there. So it's interesting how it works out. Uh, Daniel. What's up, Daniel? Oh, hey, how's it going, everybody? I just wanted to say that. Worst uh, by the minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right here. I just want to say I think Courtney won, obviously. But um, I think Courtney was sort of focusing on substance as opposed to emotion. Uh, but I do appreciate, Courtney, what you had to say. And you pretty much answered the question that I came up to ask about deacons. and. I appreciate you taking care of Nick that way, taking him to the woodshed. So thank you. Thank you, Nick, for not responding. Uh, Scott, what's up, Scott? Just representing the Democrats for Christ here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's nice to see everybody. Um, 
nice to see my dear friend Courtney and everybody in the room and uh, wishing my buddy James a speedy recovery. It's, uh, yeah, it's good to see everyone. Good to see you as well. Uh, Mr. Michael, how are you? Wait, have the Democrats for Christ slaughtered any babies today? Because they should probably get yeah, on well, that since they have children. Yeah, well, we take turns. We volunteer. So I have a shift coming up at noon. All right. That's yeah. Fair. Um, yeah, and then we take them. We try to find Christian babies, and then we once they're killed, we take them to the synagogue to to be eaten. Um, I did see a, that went too I, far, y'all. I did see a Planned Parenthood uh, priest. They, their uh, their frock or whatever that is. It, it was, you know, like the little sash thing they wear. Um, it was, um, had the Planned Parenthood logo on it, like both sides, like how it would have like a, a, a cross or a dove or something and a, a traditional thing. Um, the the um, little sash around their, their robes um, had the Planned Parenthood logo. I thought that was interesting. Um, By the way, Nate, uh, I'll tell you, I, I did a deep dive recently because um, uh, I heard J.D. Vance quoting like Curtis Yarden in a, in an interview, and I started researching this guy. And Yarden, this is pretty wild that that Vance would quote this guy, like in an open interview. I mean, because Yarden's sort of anti-democracy and thinks he. You gotta, Yarden you gotta give said, us a little more, Scott. Like, who is the guy? Like, I don't think yeah. any of us have ever heard of him. Yarden is a um, he's a Jewish guy. I, I don't know if he's observant or not. He's a lot of the tech bro guys are into him, and. Uh, He's um, he's kind of a he's a guy that does a lot of you know speaking in the tech crowd and stuff, and basically he's um, anti democracy. I mean, he really thinks that um, we, that really we need a kind of um, you know that liberalism is sort of and by liberalism I mean classical liberalism, small l, um, uh, not left wing stuff. I, that liberalism has kind of run its course. That really we'd be better. In a kind of um, an elitist, I mean, he says stuff like this. I'm not paraphrasing him. He'll say, "Elite, the elite should run society." Uh, I he 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 actually said in this video I watched. He said, "American, we need a CEO. That's a dictator. We need to get over our fear of dictators." And so I'm like shocked. I yeah. So much, <laughs> Vance, like, I don't know how much of this stuff Vance is into. I'm just shocked he would say it. Yeah. So um, one, yeah, I, I don't know what he was quoting or what interview. Um, it's like, you know, you, could you find a quote for where uh, Hitler said, wow, that's a beautiful sunset and then quote Hitler. And it's like, he's quoting Hitler. It's like, yeah, but it, he said there was a sunset and yeah, the sunset was pretty nice on that date and time. That has nothing to do with, with, you know, Hitler and his atrocities. So, you know, if this guy, you know, made some quote that was like good and unrelated to like anti-democracy and communism or whatever. And he's like, Hey, yeah, this is a quote. He's popular for saying it. it's a good quote doesn't mean he agrees with everything. I am more shocked that when, um, man, Democrats cannot keep Trump out of their mouth. Like Harris and Walls on the debate, both, like every other thing, they're, they're asking about policy and it's like Trump's bad, Trump's bad. Democracy is a threat to our democracy. The people who are the most un -demo democratic, you would think they would, they would tiptoe around and maybe not bring attention to that. Um, I'm shocked that Vance didn't hammer Walls when he kept talking about how Trump's a threat to the democracy when Trump was actually elected. Kamala did not pass a primary. She was given it. There was no vote. It was not democracy. So if anyone is a threat to democracy, it's the party who is not democratically elected to represent their party's position. Yeah, for president. But I mean, I like I know the thing about that argument though, and I hear what you're saying, but I, I, I mean, parties are under no obligation to be democratic in the way they pick their. Um, you know, primary. Right, right. That's that's the thing. But it's yes. the hypocrisy. So it's like, yeah, the, the only reason they did it is like, you know, for a money play and all this other stuff so she can get Biden's money and all, all that. So right, I, mean, right, right, I, under, right. I understand the letter of the law, but the, but then it is so hypocritic, uh, hypocritical to turn around and be like, oh, anti-democracy. He's such a threat to democracy. So just because your party didn't force you to do it democratically, um, you should well, have I, done it democratically. I, 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 look, look, or at I, least I, if you did, I, well, to finish. At least if you didn't do it democratically, you should probably take a chill pill on talking about how other people are a threat to the democracy. Go ahead and have a and final word, and then we'll get to the other people. I'm sympathetic in one regard in that I was one of the guys that wanted to go to the convention. I thought there was a pretty decent field, including my governor, Josh Shapiro, but, oh, but the Democrats are so anti-Semitic these days that Shapiro's views on Israel, which I share, would have been um, – 
would have been a deal breaker. I think it's just one of the evils of our party, right? I mean, we condone anti-Semitism. Uh, we, we give them quarter. Uh, it's disgusting. And um, yeah, but I, I mean, I think I, I, I'm with you. I'm sympathetic to the, to the, to the point you're making. And I would have, I, I think we probably could have gotten a stronger candidate than Harris. Although, in her defense, she did unify the party. She's raised a lot of money. So maybe she's a much stronger candidate. Than unify the but, party. But in 2020, Bro, a wet piece of flotsam could unify the Democrats. It was, it was, Kamala, <laughs> was a, well, Kamala was a risk to try to see if they can get something rolling. She was vice, she's VP now. They try to use her popularity in her position and try to garnish anything from the American people. She is not ready. You know, that's why she didn't do interviews. That's why she didn't do any type of debates before. Even Waltz was weak in debates. They, they, if you really think that Kamala was re- is ready, especially what's coming up now as far as this war that we may be putting ourselves into, she is not ready. She is a puppet. The intention was she was going to win. And then whoever else, as far as on the left, is going to try to govern through her. But she herself was not going to be spearheading that at all. I, I, I don't, I do not smell any confidence from that woman or our capability. This is not. Hey happening. Nate, can I do a shameless slug real fast before I do you move on? Um, uh, yeah, make it real quick. I did a, I did a podcast recently on uh, presuppositionalism, and I'll put the, uh, I can put the link in the chat. Um, you know, Van Till is a Philly guy. Uh, well, not originally, but, you know, he taught at Westminster. I'm a big presuppositionalist fan. And so my buddy and I, who's a pastor in Vermont, did kind of a primer on presuppositionalism for, um, for our listeners. So I'll put it in chat. So wait, you're okay. taking a positive stance on presuppositionalism? Yes, yes. I like, pre- I like, yes, yeah. I, uh, yes, absolutely. I like presuppositionalism. I'm color me shocked. I like it. Okay, so that is in chat. You if guys got to get to know this. people better. Yeah, no. I, if anyone I'm wants sure. to check that out in chat, go ahead. Yeah, but thanks, I, I want to say hi know, to Scott. Michael and then Saint. Yeah, so Michael, uh, go ahead. If you're speaking, Michael, in three, two, one. Saint, what's up, Saint? How are you? I wonder if Michael saw the Haitian immigrants are eating snakes. Maybe he'd get outraged then. (laughs) What's up, Saint? Hey, what's up? Uh, I had a question about 2 Corinthians 10, 6. I posted it in the chat. Let me... Uh, so verse five, my question's about six, but five says, we destroy arguments and every lofty option raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. And then verse six, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Can you guys explain like what that means to being ready to punish every disobedience when our obedience is complete? Um, well, let's see. I thought you were going to ask like, what kind of punishment do you mean? Do, do you dole out? But when obedience is complete, um, I mean, you know, there's overtones of like, you know, when you're actually like, I mean, you know, you're, nothing's going to be complete until the day you're in heaven. Um, so, I mean, I, I would just say that at the beginning, but when obedience is complete, I don't know, Chris, you got anything? I, ha- I have some ideas, but I mean, you know, if you're like, I have read a book and I know the answer, that'd be great. <laughs> so I would just say a proper exegesis of this is it's talking about spiritual warfare, right? Is the context. Um, when we're casting down imaginations or whatever you want to translate the word as, um, this is talking specifically about the things that we do here, right? Which is taking on arguments, every lofty argument raised against the knowledge of God. That is the, that's the exegesis for this. As far as obedience and disobedience, it means obedience to the word of Christ. And punishing disobedience um, is simply... Uh, going back to the context is casting down those lofty arguments that, you know, pagan philosophers in this particular case would have against the gospel. 
And I, I would say, yeah, and, and, I mean, it's to the church in Corinth, right? So you can, you, I mean, you can say this is this can be extrapolated to everyone for all time, but I mean, specifically this, I mean, it's Corinthians, it's to the church of Corinth. So, you know, punishment, not, not I, I thought that's where you were going. I was going to say not with like foils and whips, but I mean, you know, be ready to like do church discipline, like correct discipline, uh, you know, up to and including like, hey, get out of our church if they're just refusing to correct, right? Like the, turn them over to Satan for the destruction of their souls. So in the end, maybe they can be saved. So, you know, like the church discipline structure. Um, and I'd say when obedience is complete, um, that, that's talking about, you know, when when they've had the full opportunity to correct their behavior. And again, specifically to the church in Corinth, but the general principle can be applied to pretty much anyone at all time. Want to respond to that, Saint, if you want. So so the, the punishment is directed towards other people or to ourselves? No, to ourselves. It's taking every thought in captivity to Christ. But then when it says like, being raised, like, like well, 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 yeah, like, I, I think me and, yeah, I mean, would you not say that's like, you know, being ready to punishment, like, like, whatever it said, like, wrongdoing or whatever, or discipline, like, would that not be speaking of, like, the church body or, like, the church discipline, like, Hey, bro, need to stop uh, sleeping around. You need, need to get yourself in order. Not, Would you say that is not, not what this, this is saying? Yeah, it's not in this context. I mean, I mean that is a thing, but that not in this particular context. He addresses that in other places. So then we're, we're punishing, we're expecting other people then to be obedient and punish them. If it's not us. Question. It's about denying yourself, taking up your cross and following him. That's what this is about. This is not about other people chiding you because you do wrong stuff. It's talking about arguments raised against the knowledge of God. Because, like, to me, when I read it, it's, like, kind of towards us. And, like, when once we start taking all of our thoughts captive to Christ, we'll start obeying him more and more and more as we work through our our sinful nature. So like if we're battling with anger and we start practicing taking our thoughts captive to maybe honor others over ourselves so we don't get crabby at people, then once we get over that mountain, there'll be something else but there'll always be something else. But to me, it sounds like it's saying that we can destroy sin in our lives if we take the thoughts captive and stuff. Uh, you guys still on uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 6? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it, reading the verse, uh, I haven't looked at the context, but it looks like what the verse is saying is that uh, there's a justice or a rendering of correction or justice that's given by the saints, but it's not going to be done prematurely. Uh, the The context here in this verse is saying that uh, being ready to do it once uh, obedience is complete, right? Once obedience is complete. So being that obedience, obedience will be complete. In other words, uh, you can't start the job until you get your college degree. Right. So with the college degree comes the readiness to perform the role. Likewise, what he's saying here is that there's a readiness to perform the role of serving justice only when one's uh, uh, obedience is complete at that point. That's what it looks like it's saying there. So like similar to uh, remove this back out of your own. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, it sounds just like that. Right. There's a there's or a correction. You, of uh, you see, Paul also uses this in. Um, somebody remind me is in Romans where he says, uh, you who teaches the law, do you do you pro do you do you have idols? Uh, you who say, you know, so he's he's judging the Jews in that context, saying or oh, you say that you keep the law. Right. So how are you teaching the law when you're not keeping the law yourself? Or how is it that you're judging another one when you're you're pretty much in the same situation yourself. So what he's saying here, it seems like he's on the same page with everything he said in those previous statements is that justice is rendered by one whose obedience is complete. Right? Um, so, yeah. 
One of the commentaries I've read on the first part of the second part, people were disagreeing about when your obedience is complete. But the first part, saying Paul is talking about church discipline, like he he is ready to punish by excommunication or any kind of church discipline, people's disobedience in the church. But people disagree from the commentaries I'm reading about what he means by when your obedience is complete. Like I, they disagree on that. I don't know. Like, for me, like, I try to obey God all day, every day. And for me, the best thing I put into practice has been taking my thoughts captive to obey Christ. Because, like, every sin, like, we'll either feed a bad thought or we we won't take control of a thought quick and then sin with anger or whatever. But to me, it, it makes sense that it's talking about us being obedient and then yeah it is talking about other. us but when paul says we're ready to punish any disobedience he's talking about church discipline by church discipline that's the punishment okay yeah, we'll, we'll take your word you, on that's that, nope is a disagreement now i've read three or four commentaries historical and uh contemporary and all of them say the same thing so you might be demonstrating you're not able to execute the text and not these four people no i i came to oh, answer not i'm not telling you guys not you what not you like a, oh yeah sorry. not you not you oh. because you you have the male anatomy he was not asking you. he was asking he was asking wow he's almost the, my favorite what, person on his app yo i'm so Nick, are you even drinking again <laughs> Saint, what Lord you're talking Alabama, about when you're man. talking about Don't sanctification? Saint. Romans talks about if you, if even you though live, you disagree with Nick here. Rome, Saint Romans talks about if you live, you know, according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, by the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. You're talking about that aspect, like we're putting to death the deeds of the body by the Spirit, and it says we'll live if we do that. We're called to do that. That's sanctification. So I think Romans really deals with that about. Uh -huh. uh, being transformed in the renewing of your mind, putting to death the deeds of the body, considering yourself dead to sin. Like that's a big part of it. The mentality that you are dead to sin, that you're no longer so enslaved to sin. You do by have the, the renewal power. of our mind, by the renewal of our mind, does that just come mystically and magically? No. Or would that come over time of practicing how the Bible tells us to think, what not to think about, what to think about like don't even think about lustful acts so then we practice like oh my gosh that was a lustful thought that was dumb like to me it it's all about obedience us being obedient to the word yeah there is obedience and there is romans 12 where it says don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word of God renews our minds. What you do is sometimes a reflection of how you think. So if you think certain things about sin and you think certain things about yourself, that's going to determine how you live. That's why it says consider yourselves dead to sin. Because if you have the mentality that I'm still a slave to sin, I just can't overcome this, it's just who I am. Of course, that's that's already a defeated mentality. You're going to give in to that. Uh, and you you shouldn't have that mentality. You should have the mentality that you are a new creature in Christ. You're not enslaved to this. It's not going to give me any joy. I have power over this. I have the spirit. All, all these different things, the mentality that you have about sin and about yourself is going to determine how you act sometimes, how you live. Like having the mentality, having the understanding that God has set you free from certain things, you're going to walk more in that. And plus, yeah, there's discipline. There's self-control. We have to practice that. But the the Bible does talk a lot about the mind and the way we think determines, you know, our actions sometimes. Bro, this isn't like an AA talk circle where you're just like emoting um, to fellow alcoholics. Oh, what's up with the, no one thinks the old English? Nick, no, one, Nick, no one thinks what you had to say, um, number one, made sense. What's up with number the beers, two, yo? <laughs> uh, why would anyone be interested in so, uh, getting I, I guess. Can I say I guess, one thing, Nate, and I'll shut up? I swear. I just wanted to say. Well, I, I mean, well, well, I mean, yeah, Daniel, I, I guess no, because I mean, what everyone is doing is just backbiting, and it all sucks for everyone. Um, and, and you kind of came on the tail end of it, but like a, a week ago, 
uh, you know, Nick confessed to the room that, you know, once upon a time he had a problem with alcohol, he was, with alcohol. He stood up in front of his whole church and like confessed and it was a whole thing. And, you know, he's been all what? good and restored for a long he's time. He's been drunk on this app. So don't know, don't care. That's what the guy said. Let's, anyway, let's clarify this. I haven't drank. Yeah. That I told you about was 2016. So, so let's be clear. The point is, um, I, I mean, so <laughs> Daniel is is using this to like throw it in the face and like ag the guy on and you know for people who say they could be a good moral atheist without the belief in a god or gods is that something someone in that position would do and i, I don't know daniel's position if he espouses that or not but i'm just thinking why would you do that even if it is true i mean as nick says it's not true and you know i will believe him because i don't have evidence to the contrary but i mean even if it was was true like what kind of moral monster would do that like i, I mean forget god and egypt and slavery like if someone's like, hey, I had a problem with like hookers or drugs or meth or beer, it's like, are you going to like use that and shove it in their face? Like, what if you're the one that causes someone to relapse and like dive off a building because they're overcome with guilt? Like that is a piece of crap position to take. Again, Daniel, not calling you a piece of crap, but that position, that mindset, that is trash, man. And I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I have to go anyways, but I mean, I guess that's a sad note to end the room on. But can we all be better? And like the ad hom attacks, like, you know, we're talking about the church discipline and the lady pastors, and it goes from like intellectual ascent to like ad homs and like, you know, making fun of people's characters. Like, can we try to do better? And V, like earlier, you're like, well, do, don't we just keep trying every day? Consider this me trying again every day. Can we please do better? For the people who don't care about Christians and don't care about God or anything like that, you're on your own. Do what you want. Um, if you want to come here, you know, as long as you can control yourself, it's an open forum. That's fine. Let's have a respect for the Christians who want to say we're held to a higher standard. Can we please hold ourselves to a higher standard? If you need some Bible verses, I'm happy to give them to you. But I think we already know them, right? Don't be quarrelsome. Soft answer turns away wrath. All these things. Don't be a jerk. Don't argue about dissensions, genealogies and all this minutia. It is a cancer to all who hear it. Um, so anyways. Everyone have the best that you can. Maybe we should all take some time for a prayerful reflection. And, um, you know, I'm not immune from this. I did some crappy stuff too. So, you know, we will see everyone tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Me, take me, me, care. Me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me, wait, wait. can we actually just pray? Like when's the last time we prayed in this space? Uh, well, yeah, go for it. Then we'll, mm. yeah, well, uh, well, you know, I'm going to say hey, no. A woman gave me that mm, suggestion, man. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it, you know, that is one thing I'll, I'll just address real fast. Like sometimes uh, people will want to pray in this room and you think, why would you forbid praying in a Christian room? Um, but it's because it's a mixed room, right? So you never know. Like I, like, I want to be reverent to some degree. So if there's someone who's not a Christian and doesn't care and they're just going to like, you know, uh, throw throw shade like in the middle of it or interrupt it, like that, it's just I don't have a good conviction about that. So um, I I try to shy away from it in this room because it's so mixed. Not like for any other reason, like, you know, if these like godless demons could listen and hear, that'd be great. Um, shout out atheists who are not godless demons or, or, well, you know, you guys are fine. But the ones who are not respectful, like that, that's why I try to shy away from it. So I think we should all do that ourselves. Um, I, I will definitely do that. But um, Nick, can you say something in like five seconds? Because I know you were trying to get in. Well, yeah, I think anyone who knows me and I've shared my testimony no, doesn't is not unfamiliar with anything Daniel said. Yeah, as an unbeliever, and even when I was for a few years as a Christian, I struggled with alcohol. Yeah, it's nothing I haven't admitted to anybody. I admitted in the room. The lie is that that's recent or that's continued. That was 2016. I haven't drank anything since 2016, just to clarify that. So yes, when that happened, I confessed it before the church, repented. Haven't drank anything since 2016, but Daniel is a troll and a liar, and I think he knows that. And he's just well, trying to say something to, to get knows. under my skin. Well, don't pay the troll toll. All right, everyone, have a good day. Let's all go pray. All right, see you guys.